If you like the show, but you're always on the go, uh, look it up on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast. It's a podcast, man. Come on. Press our turbo is also available on podcasting apps. And now on with the show. Hello and welcome to Press Start Turbo. On today's episode, we're going to be talking all about genre bending and mixing in video games. Then we're going to be talking to two of the developers from the recently released genre bending stealth game, Raw Metal. And to wrap things up, we're going to be talking about Kenshi, as chosen by the Patreon. Kenshi. Today, I'm joined by Billy, Brendan, and Ken. <laughs> When you said genre bending the first time, I genuinely thought you said gender bending. Not I, uh, dude, I, I thought the same. Thing. <laughs> I think I think you tried to say the word genre and gender at the same time. So I, I think I'm just foreign. segment we're uh we're doing we're bringing back a segment from the first episode that people seem to enjoy uh called slop versus sludge and since brendan Let's here hear it, he, he gets the Let's host in my game. left hand i hold a game in my right hand i hold a different video game i have picked two pick your fucking poison and one i will is, talk about one of these one poisons. of them is lying one of them is saying <laughs> um, truth. before we pick <laughs> Do you want to just remind people of what Slough and Sludge is? I right play now? a lot of really mid to bad video games, and I have opinions on video games that are often bad. Uh, there are a lot of video games from the, I want to say like 2005 to 2011 that I would quantify as Slop or Sludge, i.e. games that aren't necessarily bad, uh, but still games that you would see somebody playing on the background of a television in a movie or a TV show. Games that you would rent and you have fond memories of, but nobody has any idea what you're talking about. That is Slop, and it can even be Sludge. Sludge is just the bad version of that, where there is nothing redeeming. There is no redemption you, there. They are just can we, uh, unquantifiably terrible and awful. Can we get an example that everybody would know for both so that we're all on exactly. the same page? Exactly. For Slop, <laughs> I would say Haze for the PlayStation 3 by Free Radical <laughs> Design. Haze. For Sludge, I would say Black Sight Area 51 for the PlayStation 3 or any other console. I, I love how I said, like, can you get, can you <laughs> tell us one that anybody can understand and you just pick two games? Everybody that knows these two not video games that are not <laughs> niche in any way. Okay. All right. Better choice. Replace Black Sight Area 51 with Lair, okay? Is that better? I don't know. Do people even know what Six Axis... Kids these days, do they know about <laughs> Six Axis? Do you know about Six Axis Control? <laughs> you, right here. In, comment below. Do you know Six Axis? <laughs> Tell me if I've, you know what this is. Use I, your Six I've Axis no controller. Assumers, we, don't, we have no idea. Do you actually not know what that is? No. Oh, God. I have no clue. Oh, Six Axis is a control mechanism on the PlayStation 3 controller where you move the controller up, down, left, and right across oh, right. the it's Six just, Axis. Just, Oh, yeah, okay. it's just, it's, I didn't know it was it, called it's that. It's gyro. No, it's, 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 it's gyro, gyro, but limited. Gyro. It's gyro, but limited. And gyro? also, Lair yeah. is a video game that is built specifically gyro. and only for the, 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 the hero. Is gyro. It gyro. 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 Ooh, gyro. I'd fucking go for mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Speaking of gyros, Brendan, you're my hero. Left or right? What, what's the devil's hand again? Left? Left, left or right? Let's oh, go for left. Devil's hand. Hoop killer. One, two, three, fuck and four. You. What? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? What? That's not mid. That's just, you just said. Is that killer. real? You're making, you're, <laughs> you're making games up. I'm googling. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Poop killer is real because I've seen him play it. <laughs> fuck you, though. That's what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Okay, so, so what is on, this? On itch.io, there are these video games. They are basically a dollar or two dollars, and they are these video games that are that are kind of aping old '80s and '90s horror movies in a way, uh, and they're all about this this guy who has the toilet for a head and he kills people with with turds mm. and they're about half an hour long a piece i've played the first four so far 
And I want to say there's something oddly charming about them but to make me put them in the slop category, especially since they're, you know, at retail a dollar a piece. They're very games that I would play with somebody while getting really fucking high. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that there's a place for them artistically, but I will say that, like, just I'm glad they exist because people should get more psychotic with the shit. That they make. Now, this is a this is an itch.io game as well. Fresh off the press. These, these are on itch.io. They're also on Steam underneath the garbage horror collection which i believe they're 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 done by the same people wait where, is it actually yeah, called the, the garbage i think it's called garbage collection? horror like they do not pretend that it is anything okay. other than what it is like they're not saying that this is enlightened horror they don't pretend they know exactly what they are they are what um uh, they are what trauma is to movies. They are to video games. Okay, uh, well, I, you say that, but you're not ready for Poop Killer by A24. <laughs> I cannot wait for Poop Killer by A24. But yeah, the games are really simple. You literally just walk around, you do a sequence of events, the Poop Killer appears, and then you pick an ending. Like, there's not like there's emerging gameplay in one, So two, wait, three, you're not the Poop Killer? You are not the Poop Killer. You're being chased by the Poop you're Killer. You're the Poop Killie. Uh, the Poop Killie. Uh, the first video game, you're in a movie store. And then you're just like chilling, like selling people their rental videos at like a blockbuster. And then somebody <coughs> comes in to use the toilet and they don't flush and they leave giant clogged turds in the toilet. The poop killer <laughs> has you. to kill you because your toilet is clogged. And that's the bit for the first four that uh, I played. The first one is in a rental store. The second one is in a um, uh, a weed like apartment for a guy that sells weed. The third one is in a bar. And the fourth was one is in a sex store. <laughs> With penises everywhere. Oh I haven't played the fifth one yet, and I think the fifth one is more Haunted House and has an actual gun and gameplay. And I'm excited to delve into the world of Poop Killer because there are, uh, including the ninth one coming out soon, there will be ten after the ninth one is released. Okay, so you, you answered my question. I was going to say five. How many are there? There are ten if you include Poop Killer Origins. Poop Killer oh my God. Origins. <laughs> Stop. Poop Killer Origins. And like, this is something that I talk about where I like, I like to experience weird, bad, any kind of media uh, because I like to expand my horizons, even in negative ways, because I think art should be experienced no matter how bad it is to a degree. Okay. Uh, horizons a horizon, I guess. So this is slop. This is definitely this is slop. slop. This is, this is as a cohesive series, you pay probably about for all 10 video games, a half an hour a piece. You're probably paying about $20, which I know value value per time is dog shit for like an equation for like how much fun you get out of it. But I would say each video game is worth like a buck or two. If you're, if you're bored and you want to like scare your friends in your like discord, not like actually scare, scare them, but make your them friends. Go, what the f by scare. I mean, what the <laughs> fuck are you playing? Scare them into putting you into an institution for playing poop killer, gotcha. but they are slop. <laughs> I would, I would say 100% poop killer is slop. This is what we're doing, huh? This is how we start. I oh, have yeah. my sludge pick in Good my right Lord. hand. <laughs> okay, let's... I, I'm horrified, but it's time to open that hand now. Now, you may not know about this video game. Um... This is this this is uh you may see streamers playing it right now. I played it for an hour and I was fucking miserable. If you think you're having fun with it, awesome, cool, kudos to you. This may be a Brendan Sludge pick, uh, but it's called Once Human. Once Human. Once I have not heard Once of Once Human. And it's like, what if we made a game that was bad and not good? Uh, but it was like, what if we took anything from Control but didn't do anything interesting with it, and then also took from the division? And then also added survival crafting to it. And mm. it is it is miserable. But it is Cap also I, I say is this it is on? it's on PC. It's once human. I think it's also on mobile. Is this new? Yeah, this is new. The I it's just on played mobile. the beta. This is the beta. It's beta, baby. It's beta. I would still say sludge for the beta. I played an hour and a half of it. Okay, uh, so they have time to turn it into they slop. They have time to turn it around into slop. Uh, I also didn't get like the motorcycle unlocked. Hear so. that? Once human developers, you could become slop. Oh, nitties. We love. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is oof. It is oof. It is oof. The gunplay is just kind of bad. The survival elements were, were half and half. Um, they really trying trying very hard on like the anomalies, anomalies, deviance, anomalies. Like using the that's like the that's the trend right now. I don't know why, but everybody's trying to be fucking every everything is trying to take from uh like inspired analog horror uh, without actually understanding any of the th uh, thematics. 
for analog horror because people are just seeing big scary monster and going wow big scary monster cool you should be able to shoot at that um, where like You're big scary right, monster eh? is way more about like the vibe of the big scary monster rather than like oh big scary monster going to kill you and i'm i'm big when it comes to show don't like the show don't tell and i don't think in analog horror i always think all of it is way better if you don't fucking show the monster but this is putting a gun in your hand and having you shoot at the monsters so they kind of have to because otherwise their survival shooter game is not gonna have much to do in it i guess so what what turned it to sludge for you oh just the fucking survival crafting elements and the walking around and picking up ores and hitting rocks like and hitting trees and it's, oh, it's, it's like, like rust, rust but it's pve uh, hmm. oh it's pve and pvp if you go to the pvp servers yeah oh, okay. okay so it's literally like rust then it's like rust but what if we took like some is the aesthetics from like Ghostwire Tokyo and Control, and uh, the first boss you fight is literally just Siren Head, and I was like, "What? Well, yeah, no." So it's it's oh literally just, there. There is God. nothing that I have seen so far in the game that is wholly original to the game. Everything visual wise has been from something else, which mm. is uh, really. Even if they tune the gameplay up, my biggest problem is that there is there is nothing that I saw that made me say, "Wow, this is wholly original and amazing." Because I've seen everything that is that it is it, this is ripped from, and that they have ripped to make this game's aesthetic. I, I guess they have a gotcha. walking bus with like flesh arms. That's something. Uh, uh, the a real okay. battle bus. But all the cool shit you see in the trailer is is like only in the game way fucking later like otherwise you are wandering around empty suburbia and then you have to build your base and then collect 5,000 stones so you can build one wall and then oh. it's, it's so it's so it's so mobile core it's so like uh nasty core and this is the open beta and they already have like a battle pass tiered system Ooh, no more fucking building in games i'm so sick why of do this. they put those into betas that is an interesting decision. Well, I, I don't know, but I've been seeing it a lot. It wasn't fucking... Was there a beta for Suicide Squad? No, it was just it just launched early for some people who pre-ordered, right? Well, because um, once human at least, it's just going to be a, yeah. like a free to play. Like you won't have to pay yeah. for it, and I didn't have to. Pay oh, for it's it, a so free like, to play. I don't have any like buyer's remorse. I just thought it was holy. It was holy sludge, and maybe when full release, it won't be sludge. But I just it was you're like, not eh. ready for the fucking takeover this is going to have with children. Oh, once human kids will love. Yeah, they're going to love once human. Gonna they're going to love grabbing the meat man's oh, yeah. briefcase head and then being oh, yeah. able to fire white oh, yeah. goo out Dude, of the briefcase head it's a free game with guns and survival crafting if i was a kid i'd be like yippee fuck yeah videos game once they get that spongebob collab it's over you know oh like once spongebob's once fucking squidward's nose enlarges and oh, becomes no, a they're creature just gonna have squidward suicide event it's gonna be awesome <laughs> <laughs> yes baby Oh, I can't wait. Kids are finally going to be able to see it. Uh, Squid Bomb Spudigaba. What drew you this, to this sludge? I really, I saw the first trailer for it and I was like, oh shit, I love enlightened, like, uh, modern new horror. Um, uh, what, what is it? Like, concrete horror, abstract horror. I, I really enjoy that. That may be my favorite genre of horror. Like, what if we did Skinamarink good, right? Where, like, the, uh. the horror is more. Uh, like SCP inspired or Backrooms inspired because I really like that liminal that liminal space kind of horror mm. that's established in Control because Control is one of my favorite games of all time and like the red the red w the way the enemies are like clearly red once you're in like the evil dimension everything is very uh, Control esque I was like okay I will give this a shot because I like things that that establish this kind of modicum or kind of medium and then I played it and I was like wow I want to die it's disappointing for me I'm sure there are going to be some people that absolutely love it and if you have any mean comments please direct them directly at me and i will direct you to my asshole you can file in one at a time speaking of asshole what's in there i don't know let is me there a third game is there oh. a third game but do you want me to keep talking about sludge because i can go on forever. Oh, I thought, did you have another game i don't know i could pull one out of my ass though if you really want me to do <laughs> it we're already here i'm sure we're i played here. trigger man <laughs> on the xbox so. trigger man trigger, trigger man. man are you triggered Stop. are you triggered <laughs> are you <laughs> We're talking about fucking <laughs> this guy from Trigger Star Man. Man. Oh my god. Uh, what is Trigger this? Man on the Xbox. 
uh, was made by the same people that ended up, I believe it was Crave Entertainment who also ended up making the Man vs. Wild game, which I've also played because I'm a little freak. Oh. And it is just, I have nothing nice to say about it. It's a dog shit poo poo dick and it's just an awful third person shooter. It's like, what if we made Max Payne, but none of the fun stuff of Max Payne and no bullet time? Like none of the, oh. none of the cutscenes are even animated it's weird because it feels like a cheap movie video game but it has its own premise and it's not based on anything so it's just like a weird italian mafia story that just is you it's it it's it's poorly controlled it's poorly made i have you okay i'm looking at gameplay right now i gotta say that why does the trigger man have a fucking dumpy <laughs> he has a fat what the hell? They he gave does. him a gigantic fucking ass. He has a huge, corpulent sack. It's insane. He's <laughs> a that massive thing, butt sack. It's insane. That thing is incredibly... Dude, he could fucking kill somebody with that. Dude, Jesus Christ. Call that man the bun crustable. His ass is stacked. <laughs> oh, my God. How the fuck is he not alerting the entire city with that? I have nothing nice. To, I, I genuinely nothing nice to say about it. It's fucking weird and bad. And he has a fat ass. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. It's published by Crave, uh, developed by Point of View. Crave uh, Entertainment. Defunct in 2010. Point of View also yep. made Damnation and TNA Impact cross the line is they help develop that. I just remember Crave on then they do like the dave mira games i uh, yeah they did they did they, yeah, they, they're a publisher like, they're not a developer but like i just remember they published i remember the man versus wild game they published that oh they weren't they weren't a developer oh no. they're not okay no, the developer the developer ended up uh, going on to make damnation uh -huh. which is like a video game that i is also on my list of slop but more importantly they did make a garfield game for their first video game right uh, looking at this this awesome. is just third person corridor shooter with it's like, third person corridor shooter with guns and with with a boring story of like you do, do disrespect in my family i'm gonna freaking kill you and i literally for the last two levels i, I because they're just repeats of levels from you earlier beat this I just game? Typed, yeah i beat it i just typed in a cheat <laughs> that let me beat the level and win oh <laughs> i literally clicked a button and said fuck this i'm done and then I there's beat no it. way this game is that long dude fucking it's, it's about trigger, three man. and a half four hours it's nothing yeah that's it, it looks like a game that they just they just pulled out their ass and they were like yep it's gotta go you know what this game could have used another mm. genre oh, a genre oh, added oh. to the game yeah like, wow oh. what if it was a third person uh what if it was a roguelike sim roguelike Ooh. what if it was a roguelike let's talk about let's talk about genre bending in games specifically let's talk about only roguelikes. Oh. Let's add roguelike <laughs> elements to fucking everything. Uh, well, one of one of the games that I have on my little list that I was going to go, that's a good game, is a roguelike. Oh, of course. Oh, shit, let's hear it. I, I feel like everybody knows that there's been a trend in games, at least recently, where a lot of uh, the ways people mix or developers mix up for games is to add a secondary genre to an already like tried and tested formula. Yeah. Um, like you'll find... You know, different types of roguelikes, card games. I'm sure, yeah. So, Tin, what was the one you were going to talk about? Uh, I really like Cult of the Lamb. Cult of the Lamb, there's the, it's got the little Animal Crossing, little like, sim. yeah, little little village sim, and then it's got actually, like, fun roguelike gameplay that sometimes I would just forget about because I spend time running around my gay little village talking to my gay little villagers. Yeah, that's a really good example of a game that does it well. What I wanted to talk about specifically with genre bending is how AAA games have been using it to make their games bloated and awful. <laughs> Specifically, I'm thinking, I've been, I was playing like Immortals of Avium because that's the, <laughs> the fucking. <laughs> I like that we I'm all laughed sorry. at him. <laughs> that, no, it's, it's fun to laugh at Immortals of Avium. It's fucking awful. I was just playing through it and I just had this, it, it's so intrusive in the way that it just constantly, can we be done with skill trees that are just like gain 15 armor? Gain 10% crit. Why are we genre bending fucking action games with like the lightest RPG elements? I'm so fucking sick of it. Every game is like this recently. I was playing fucking Ry Rise of Ronin, which I actually really like, but I still gotta waste so much fucking time in a skill tree, and the skill tree has like two fucking different currencies in it. Fuck off. Mm. Can we be done? Give like at least be merciful and I actually want more one. currencies in my video games. No, <laughs> oh my god! I think I think Avengers had it down. Yeah, I think I think we need more. Immortals of Avium is literally like that, where it just has like blue essence, red essence, green essence, mana essence, fucking a 
me when I'm gear, playing the Avatar with video numbers. game again. Oh. Yeah. Oh, stop. I feel like uh, uh, adding RPG elements was the OG genre like addition to games that that they did uh, in the heyday. Oh, and, like Sass Creed. Yeah, exa- exactly. Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed did that. Sass Creed, yeah, started adding the RPG elements like your skill Which trees. Which one? Uh, they started with Unity. Oh, uh, Odyssey. Wait, did oh you? no! Two had it. didn't two have? No, they started with I, Unity because Unity had um, Unity not only had loot and gear score. Unity also had uh, skill trees. Yeah, are you U- kidding? Unity me? had Unity had unique uh, equipment. Unity had gear score. It was because uh, mm-hmm. remember it was a multiplayer, oh. full player like cop game. Oh, it's that's the one in France. It was also not bad. People are too hard on that one. I actually well, like that one. <laughs> At release, like Unity is actually pretty fun, but at release it was so fundamentally broken and unplayable that it is left in a stigma for the rest of the the, the until the heat death of the universe. I mean, uh, I, I don't think that's the only reason. I think no. people were also just sick of playing Assassin's Creed. They, I feel like they didn't really like go full blown RPG until uh, Odyssey. I thought was the first one. Origin. Yeah, that's when they went full on like here's uh, here's leveled here's, enemies here's and health bars, incredibly open world, multiple side quests, etc. And Origins, like or it was Origins, because Origins, cause Origins yeah. had you fight literally Anubis. Yeah, it was Origins. Origins still had, I guess it was like more scaled back in scale compared to at least like Odyssey and Valhalla, which were the ones that were like really went fucking like this is gonna be a t- like eighty to like two hundred yeah. hour game. I beat Valhalla, but it's it is one of those things where like we don't even think about it anymore because now nowadays I feel like I can, yeah. I kind of expect these kinds of things, but it is an example of like genre bending that I just I just don't know why. I just don't know why we're doing it, but it kind of ex- it kind of happens. Yeah, genre bending, like how Black Flag bends um an Assassin's Creed game and a good video game together into one. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I my hand up. Stop that. There was a a, a <laughs> time when like the adding RPG elements to your game, whether it be a, like a skill tree or leveling, uh in, in that way it just wasn't like Gear a equipment. No, yeah, it I, was not. Like it, I, I, it all started with the Xbox 360 era cuz I remember that was still when we would get games like Borderlands. Borderlands is one of the biggest Damn. examples of it. Borderlands like when it first came out uh, cuz like I don't know, I'm a bit older than y'all, so I remember uh, exactly like how I felt when Borderlands came out because I was fucking pumped as hell. Like I was like, "Oh my god, they put the they put the gun in there, and you can get the gun, and you can." It's oh, I like mean, the, the marketing. I remember the oh, entire yeah, marketing was like bazillion guns. Do you know how many guns yeah. there are in this game? And then at E3, they would show the number, and everybody fucking pissed their pants. Like, are you fucking kidding me? A billion guns? And you get a gun, and it had a slightly different chamber. And then- I love those games. Though. That's what I I think is so interesting is that a lot of AAA uh, developers will use their like additions of genre or different tropes to just for marketing reasons for like that bazillion guns. I uh, one that I always think about is Spore. Because I don't know if you guys are, remember oh the God. marketing I, for Spore. I have not. I have not thought about Spore in years. It, I I played the shit out of that. Bring as it a back. Kid. Yeah. That was like the only PC game I had. That wasn't The Sims because my sisters are like they're Sims people, and they, that's all they play is Sims Two, and they still do. Well, they had Will Wright. I remember like come out onto a stage and say, "This is the everything game. Yep. This is the game that's gonna have you. You start." as a cell and it's this uh you know top down you know find some food then it's a third person action game then it's a like a rts then it's like a city builder then it's a space galactic like economy like game dude it was hyped to shit it was insane the hype cycle for that was nuts and i dude i think about it sometimes i'm like man we weren't harsh enough on him because fucking he he pulled a Peter Molyneux, <laughs> and nobody gave him Whoa. shit as much as Peter Molyneux. I guess it's because he he actually made like, well, Peter Molyneux made good games as well. I don't know what the fuck oh, he made. Goddess. <laughs> Oh but anyway, God. I was like, "What the fuck is they, goddess?" You don't have a goddess? <laughs> no, I know Godus. what goddess is. No, go, yo, this this shit is fucking uh, goddess. Can Godus? I get a goat on a fuck? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna fucking ruin your life. <laughs> God damn it! But it it added all of these different genres of games to it, and it did none of them well. It was all they were all like very surface level, just to the added to just be there kind of in a way. The, the I mean, they were also like all the same game. I'm gonna be honest, like it was not like because every stage was just move around, find things, find resource until you can go to the next stage. Yes, it was uh, quite boring. 
But I I remember the only thing I w- I cared about back then was just like I can make critters. The character creator was I mean, great. It, let's say that that was an important part. It, it's still impressive and it still works really well. Like it, the the fact that it, it recognizes limbs and everything without you having to be like, okay, so these are the legs. Okay, so if these I make are the creature the look like my dad, then I can finally earn my father's love through spore. I don't think so because <laughs> the spores weren't very nice. Oh, true. Unless they were herbivores, I don't know what the fuck that was about. Do you remember? when they released that uh, car- uh like creature creator early before the game came out oh, yeah. Yeah. and then Maybe. you could pay for it and then also the dlc that was just for the creature creator that you could also buy and it would work oh e- with evil your evil and cute yeah creepy and cute yeah. and it could work it could work with uh for people who only had the uh character creator as well what i did yeah. not know you, that you could buy the dlc <laughs> for a character creator without ever buying the full game <laughs> if you bought the collector's edition there was a retail edition of the game uh, and i know this because this happened to me uh, there was a retail edition of the collector's edition where all of the license keys uh were not active they did not work oh what they were just broken so when i got my copy of spore home i would let me install it and it would activate the key locally but it was like uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh, you can't update the game this is not an okay copy oh like, i had that yeah. i i bought the i got the because co- i remember I, I i was like a little wee i don't know i don't know how old i was when spore came out but very young and i got my parents to buy it buy that for me for my birthday and yeah, I remember that I couldn't update it after. <laughs> That's okay. I had no idea yeah, that was the thing. It was the coll- it was specifically only the collector's edition. And like, I was in high school, and I was like, "What do I do? This doesn't work. Uh, I don't know." Like, and of course, like nowadays, it'd be like, "Oh, like call or go to their support yeah, website support. and get like yeah. a thing." But I was like on my mom's computer, and it was held together with duct tape and glue with a CRT monitor attached to yeah, it. And, and, like, and also, you're you're a kid. You don't fucking understand that shit. You're just like, "No, what? the fuck is going on?" Thing don't work. I guess that's how it is. And then you just play the game. But yeah, the move away for sport i think that like shows to an element where like there are triple a games with genre where it feels like they're very tacked on or added just to say that they've had them but i feel like where it really works and where it has really worked is when it's like very core to the game or it's like it was made with the intention of doing that like uh things that come to mind are like games like near automata where it has the uh you know the bullet bullet hell segments and it where it changes the genre your camera angle and stuff like that and yeah, it's i mean it, it's always it's it's always i mean even the original near gestalt was like a bullet hell and that was one of the main selling points was like what if a bullet hell but also an action game in mm-hmm. parent mm-hmm. like in fuck in quotes action game that that game played very not great but you know whatever no, and Nier is a great example. One one thing I want to talk about real quick, though, is can, I want to talk about surprise genre flips in games. I think I know which game you're about to talk about. So, when I was a Has kid... Has a certain Jack Black in it, maybe. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> when I, I, I was a kid... I was going to talk I, about this game, but I never played it. <laughs> I saw... I was, I was watching X-Play... And I, w- I fucking loved metal. I, I mean, I, I still love metal, but I just remember being so... I gotta walk away. You're talking about Double yeah, Fine. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I'm sorry. But we are talking about Brutal Legend because I got... It, the hype cycle was real, and they were showing off, like, the first level when you get to, like, welcome to the age of metal. And it was, like, this fucking... Uh, uh, the the art fucking direction in the entire game is phenomenal. It's so fucking metal and it's it works. But the only thing that they showed was the first segment that was like maybe 20 minutes or 10 minutes where it was just like a, a hack and slash in a me- in a universe with metal and you would decapitate these dudes and it was so fucking cool and Everything like everything was exploding around you. Then you get into your car and you have all these like insane, gory axe wielding powers, and it's fucking sick. And you're exploding things around you. And then it became a it became an RTS. And then you hate the game because why the fuck did it became a fucking RTS an hour in not even an hour in it was way later than that because an hour in you're still fucking doing normal DMC shit and then it became a fucking RTS it was an open world RTS ah oh. Dude, people don't understand how upset I was. That was one of the first games I've ever pre-ordered with my own money for my birthday. Oh, oh man. Discovering. Deceived. Being, when you get to the battle at fucking Bloodhenge or whatever, and then they're like, oh, Jack Black, you have an army. 
you should fucking use your army of little headbangers. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And it just became Pikmin, but worse. Does it ever? You know how pissed does it, I was. Does it ever go back to the other combat, no, or does it just stay no, RTS? It, oh, you guys have never played. It. I I've thought never you played, played it. it. No, no. Yeah, I no, didn't know it. I'm aware of the 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 twist. Though. It is. It's it, two hours into the game, it becomes an RTS, and then for the rest of the game, it is an RTS. <laughs> <laughs> for fucking zero reason it's it's like an rts but in a weird way where it's like it's more like a mix of pikmin and right so they're I all like following you around it's so fucking yeah they they follow you around and then eventually jack black has like wings and flies around and then it becomes just truly an rts because now you're like flying in the air looking down dude most disappointed i've ever been the only the, I fucking hate that game, dude. I fucking hate Double Fine. <laughs> Fuck you. Brendan, come back. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Another game... Oh, I don't know how much I want to spoil about it. Uh, fuck Which it. Game? Uh, a, a recent game I played that had did a similar thing. Uh, a pretty recent indie game called Inscription. Uh, oh, which, oh, oh, banger. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think it's a surprise anymore. I don't know anything about it, but I, I have seen like a few things. About I love it. the first half of that game. It, absolutely beautiful art, great like um, environmental storytelling, and like the gameplay is just really fun. And it's this really cool card game. And then you get to the second half of the game, and the art style changes, and the card game you're playing changes. And man, it's just like, it's one of those things where I dropped it because I was like, this is not doing the same thing that the first half of this game was doing. And I wish it was the, the first half, yeah. <laughs> but more, but it, it doesn't do that. And I'm like, oh yeah, a lot of people do like that. It I'm sure. That, no, uh, like, the that's thing the, is, that's the big thing I keep seeing about that game. The thing is the first time that you see it and it happens, it's this big reveal and you're like, oh, that's super cool. It's going to be ch different now. And then you realize that, like, oh, I'm not going to play the stuff that I liked anymore, though. So. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. I disagree. I think it rocked. I love that game. Start to finish. Very fun. I, I would probably really like it if it wasn't a stupid fucking card game. I fucking hate card games. I I'm sick love of them. that it was a stupid no fucking more card game. I love card games. Dude, can we shove card games up? anybody's ass no, so we never see no, again. I, I gotta I gotta play Bellatro. No, um Bellatro is <laughs> the last good one. Well uh Slay the Spy is good as well. That was way Slay before the Spy then. Is fun, we, yeah. we, we're, we we can move past fucking card if anything, I'm more upset by the fact that every single fucking RPG that has come out recently keeps adding fucking tact on card games. Talking about genre mixing, can we stop that shit? Can we stop just adding fucking card games to RPGs? Oh my god, Midnight Suns doesn't need to have a fucking card game. Midnight Suns has a card game? I had no idea. It is a card oh, game. Oh no, oh, it is a card game, right? Yeah. Yes. That's <laughs> right. It is, it is. So, I thought, I thought I, you see, you were talking about tacked on ones. I thought like you could go back to your hub and then play like some fucking, no, no, I don't no, know, no. Magic the Gathering with I mean, I, I say, I say... I said like tacked on, but it's not tacked on. It, the point of the it game is, is the that game. it is a fucking. It is the game, but I'm just. It's <laughs> fun. I like that. Thing. I like. I, I like fucking. Midnight I'm Sun. so tired of playing a game, having a good time, and then the RPG element is like you have five cards, pick one. I've been playing a game that does that, and I like it. Yeah, Which game? Like it. It's a. It's a rogue. It's a. It's a. There's a. There's a rogue like uh, deck builder that's kind of like um. Uh, dark, what's the fucking evil one? The dark one. They got two of them. What is it called? The evil dark one. Yeah, they got the dark one. They dark got two one of the too. game. Darkest Dungeon? Darkest Dungeon. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I love Darkest it's kinda Dungeon. Like, it's kinda like I Darkest take it Dungeon back. With, I actually love cards. Darkest Dungeon too. Uh, it's, it's Darkest Dungeon with cards, but it's also, it's called Draft of Darkness. And it's got uh, like Mortal Kombat style realistic photos of people in costumes and everything. All the monsters are what? like photorealistic. And I've been <laughs> Wait, playing what? it. Wait, what? What is I this called? It, it Wait, once. what it's is called this Draft called? of Darkness. Draft of Darkness? It's a, a roguelike deck builder that um, it, it, it it's just such a... It's such an oddity. The moment I, the moment you said it's real people, it's like fucking P 
people in the game. Like, yeah, it's like Mortal Kombat visuals. I, it's insanity. Immediately interested. Oh, that's, that's so, so funny. cool. I'm looking at it now. That's a really Whoa, interesting Oh, that looks style. really fucking sick. I'll never play it because I see cards, but I like the art. Ah, uh, it's fine. I I like that the starter character, um, the deck I built was all around flashlights, so I felt like Alan Wake, but also I would just run up and start hitting the enemies with the flashlight. So it's a, it's yeah. a, it's good. It's got a lot of really cool okay. visuals, and I'm excited to play more of it. Um, and it does that kind of like roguelike me stack yeah. builder. It doesn't do anything like new in the genre, and I don't think the the story. It's not going to take it and and twist it around and make you go whoa. But it definitely is like a good hand, uh, like a hand of cards. Uh, I, I think feel like, I mean, you're going to disagree, Billy, because you don't like card games. But as a card game en enjoyer, I think that's been one of my favorite like genre bends that, that has happened in, in the recent history. We've gotten a lot of good games out of it, I think. And it's been really interesting to see. Like, Bellatro, obviously, is like Why the Why does it have banger. to be a card, though? Why can't it be a nice menu? Well, <laughs> Can it be a nice it fucking is, menu. Just think of it as a as a fucking rectangle menu. No, I fucking hate. I'm gonna fucking lose it. I'm gonna fucking put him in my mouth and okay, eat what all if, the cards. What if I I'm put like a little X in the top left of every card, so so you could like close them like they're a window? <laughs> is that gonna change? What? They're, they're not cards. They're fucking windows. They're all windows. <laughs> I'm holding my character is just holding fucking windows panels. Yeah. That's a freebie for anybody that wants to make a game out there. Just make a fucked up like Windows thrower. I don't fucking. But yeah, my favorite triple A, and I will end the segment just by going through what our favorite genre bending games are. But mine for me is Returnal. I think Returnal is the it's the roguelike third person action shooter bullet hell with like really cool visuals and story and like non-linear story and it's just beautiful and I love everything about it and everyone should play it. Great game, I love Returnal. No one else has played it, have they? No, no I, I, I finished it, what? Oh, I finished? watched somebody play it, didn't know what was going on and saw only the yeah. ending. <laughs> no, I, I did finish it. <laughs> uh, it's really, it's a hard game to finish fully. It's um, fucking it. Oh, it, maybe it I didn't played, see that. We also, anything. also, fuck you, because we played together. What? Oh, yeah, we did play together. I what the hell? <laughs> I forgot about that, Billy. I'm sorry. Yeah, for a second, I was like, wait, the fuck? We, we, I, I was having trouble, and I was like, could you help me? <laughs> Pass the controllers to the big brother. Could you help me? <laughs> yeah, that game had a co-op and a post-launch thing, yeah, and it's yeah. really fun. Yeah, uh, we played together. That, God, that game I, rules. Yeah. I, I think my favorite, I mean, we already talked about him, but my favorite is fucking Nier. Mm. There's I just like rep, rep, I replicant. And, I mean, Automata is a better game, obviously, but I think I, I just really, really, really like. Oh my god, I forgot! I wanted to talk about one game. Okay, okay, I have a, I have a story about a, a, a fucking insane fucking. It's an insane genre bending game. So when I was a kid, uh, we had these Canadian stores like department stores called Zellers, which had diners in them and they were terrible. I just needed to talk about the fact that they had diners in the Zellers. And when they were closing down, they it, it was like Xbox 360 end of cycle era. Like that's when like PS3 was starting to put out like those big collections of games because they were going to move on to PS4. And they were going out of business and they took out all their stock and they had one fucking GameCube game. They had one GameCube game, which was a fucking anomaly because why would it was like way, way past the cycle for that fucking console. And that game was a giant box that came with a microphone. And that game was called Odama. It is an Nintendo. It is a Nintendo game, like actually made and uh, or published by Nintendo. And it is an a real time strategy game controlled with voice command mixed with pinball machine in ancient <laughs> japan do you like blow on the microphone to push the bull or something no no you you scream at your so you have an odama and an Odo the odama is the bell uh -huh, uh -huh. like it, it, it's an actual japanese thing i think called like a, a an odama it's a big bell and you have to bring the bell of the other p dude I, i've ne I, i've never been able to fucking finish the first level because it's so dog shit it will not recognize anything thing and you, i'm you have watching to, gameplay right now it's you will not believe you what cannot believe this? you cannot believe what this game is 
It, I, it's, I, it, it I'm is, looking at it and I don't believe and it. And that is the only game at the Zellers that was still there. <sighs> and I just picked it up on a whim because I thought, why would they? Why would you fucking need a microphone for an RTS? And then it became, a, and then it was just a pinball game. I'm, I'm just like slack jawed staring at the E3 2005 no, trailer dude, for this, this game. What the is, fuck is this? This shit is fucking incomprehensible and it does not have good tutorials i i still don't know huh. how it works <laughs> there's even like a morale system if you hit too many of your fucking guys oh so this team damage it's, with the ball dude, it, 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 it's incomprehensible <laughs> there's so much shit happening and it explains none of it <laughs> it's it's something it, it's uh yeah i'm not surprised that odama failed it's too much. Yeah. Anyways, to go back to it, like I said, near Automata for me. Near and near Automata. <laughs> All right, you ten. What's your favorite genre? Uh, game? My cheating if I say Portal Two is two genres. I, that's I a think first that's a puzzle. No, I, I that's think, a, I think that that, that's works. a puzzle game. In an I, FPS. I would say Portal. Yeah, Portal that works. Because uh, all right, well, it's Portal Two. Well, Portal Portal Two. Like those games before then, did we did we have that many like? Puzzle, like first person puzzle games apart from like not really we had missed that's missed not no that that's not first person that was not first person that was like was it not it's a point and click game that was a point and click from what perspective the first person perspective oh fuck off there we from go the you, fuck you really fuck off no it's not no, that's that's but it wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't a first person yeah, shooter yeah, yeah, puzzle yeah, yeah, game. you're right it wasn't a first person shooter you're like, right it was just not, an fp game it's portal 2 portal 2 is my yeah. favorite Portal 2 is great. It does it does uh it does so much. I <laughs> Portal 2's gotta be like one of the funniest written games that I've ever played. I love that they got fucking was it JK Simmons yep. played yeah. uh, Cave Johnson. Cave Johnson. Yeah. Didn't they get back for like a <clears throat> for like an announcer pack for Dota 2 or something? Yep. Or or am Oh I, no no no, I, I don't think it was him. I remember it was uh what wasn't it just like not Gladys, the other one. Wheatley. Wheatley. I think it was Wheatley. a Wheatley. Pack. Oh yeah. I don't remember the. Okay. You know what my my when I used to play Pro Dota. By the way, surprise! I used to play Pro Dota. That's not a. That is actually not a fucking lie. You've talked about it before. Did I talk about it before? Like actually. Yeah. On the, on the, on, well, it's gonna be podcast, it's gonna it's gonna sure. be a neat little surprise for people that didn't know that I used to play Pro Dota, but I would use the uh, Rick and Morty <laughs> sound pack. Oh, of course. Yeah. The, it was it was of the era. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> What about you, Brendan? Uh, I have two. I have a pretentious pick and a real pick. Okay, okay. okay. My pretentious pick is Beginner's Guide. Oh my oh, god! Is that the, uh, I haven't thought about Beginner's Guide in so long. That's that's uh, mm -hmm. the mo the other uh, more obscure game by the guy who made. It's like uh, the Stanley yep. Parable dudes, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't think I've played that, that one. I just every every time I play it, it just is like a. I think I play it once a year and it's just a very centering experience sometimes. And it's very like, I'm so, I fucking love art. And then I have a real one, which is not my pretentious one, which is Frog Fractions, because I fucking love Frog Fractions. Oh, wait, I play, you made me play that. It was so fun. Yeah. Uh, I fucking love Frog Fractions and I love Frog Fact Fractions 3 as well, but you got to find that one. So I love frog it. Frog Fractions is just, is it math that you're a frog? It's not, no. it's... You don't you even, don't, okay, you, so the you first just one have is to, literally a game you where have to when you unlock an upgrade, yep. when you, you have it's, to, I'm going to explain it, because Frog Fraction 1 has been around for so long that, like, you can explain it. Frog Fractions 1 is a game that, like, you grab fractions as a frog, and then you buy a rocket upgrade, and then you go to the moon, and you have to stand trial on Mars because you've committed crimes against the bug populace, and, like, then it just keeps ramping up from there. It, it takes, like, 20 minutes to play it. And it's, isn't it free? It is. It is. The original one is free. It's a free Flash game, but there is a different version on Steam. Okay. And then there is a, another Frog Fractions game hidden inside a different video yep. game that you'll have to find. You can find it super easy. All I'm saying is like, you just fucking, you, you got to play it to believe it. It's, uh, it's, it's fucking, it's something. It's, it's, if you haven't played it yet, if you don't have any knowledge about it, I just love the idea of this insane like this insane mashup of different like frog based uh video games hidden inside this one about eating fractions as a frog yep. and then odds uh, the, 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 you gotta go and buy a game called glitter mitten grove on steam because it's more than it seems <laughs> that one's a hard sell that one's a hard sell but also yeah uh, i think now now they're not really worried about like the um 
like hiding it. I think there is a, a bundle on Steam that is the Frog Fraction. Oh, and it, it just has universe. that in there. Yeah, it has it in there. That's really fucking uh, funny, yeah. though. Yeah, <laughs> but like back in the day when you played Frog Fractions for the first time and you told your friends, "Sit down, fucking play this shit. It's just a frog, and you're just gonna be doing fractions." You sat there for ten minutes, and they're like, "This is stupid. This is stupid." And then, oh my god, it, get, it goes fucking crazy. It's off the walls. Very funny. Good, okay, awesome. funny time. Good times. All right, with that, we're gonna move on to the interview portion. Welcome to the interview portion of Press Start Turbo. Today we're joined by two of the devs from the recently released indie game Raw Metal. Please welcome to the show the creative director Corrigan and the programmer and composer for the game Zach. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Damn, you wrote Hello. that shit out. Good job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what full professional mode? Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> I'm never. I never get used to that. <laughs> Dude, we we go we go full professional for these, and we definitely don't talk about people shitting themselves okay. before right before hitting <laughs> record. <Right now. laughs> Um, just before we, we get, we definitely didn't spend like ten minutes doing that. <laughs> yeah, that would not happen. Just before we get into it, I would, uh, I would like if it, if uh, Kurgan, uh, you and, and Zach can just give us a brief overview of the game, just for those who haven't played it and uh, and not sure what it is. Yeah, so it's a uh, it's a blend between a top down stealth game and a sort of third person fixed camera beat 'em up. Um, you infiltrate this off world mining facility and scavenge for gear and. Uh, ultimately try and shut down this <clears throat> this giant mega corporation cool yeah so it's a it's a bit dungeon crawly bit extractiony a lot of stuff in there yeah heavy on the uh the roguelite elements that factor in as yes. well right it's it's tricky calling it a roguelike because it's like most roguelikes sort of like to lean on the on the randomization and everything of the levels so right whenever someone calls it that it's like yes technically but it's most roguelikes don't like let you extract and like have the sort of risk reward push your luck kind of thing mm. so it, it could it could be kind of hard to like market it like we're constantly going back and forth it's like do we put roguelike on the steam page because it's like people might expect something a bit different mm. but you know it can kind of be one way or another on that yeah that genre is just so hard to pin down generally see i don't blame you for flip-flopping on it it's it's a nightmare yeah i was wondering actually like where the uh concept of the game came from and 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 what made you guys decide to to go the route that you did with the game mixing genres and the whatnot yeah it's yeah. A very interesting two genres to throw together i don't know if i've ever seen anyone else do yeah, that it's fucked up and it works it's fucked yeah. up yeah. somehow <laughs> and i actually like, it, it's it, fucked it, up and evil and i actually hate aura. you both <laughs> <laughs> uh it, it came from like so i'm i'm a huge fan of stealth games and have been for a very long time but like a huge issue i had with stealth games was that most of them kind of fall apart after you get spotted and like so the de detection evasion aspect of it usually you either just like load a quick save or run away and hide and wait for the alarm to stop and then all the guards are like well uh, whatever and then just you know you then you can kind of resume the game right yeah. on top of that a lot of them sort of have this like perfectionist outlook on stealth where it's like it's like never get caught you know no one ever knew you were there no win no witnesses kind of thing yeah f f5 and f9 simulators yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> and um i'm a huge fan of games that sort of don't break that flow of like because gamers aren't perfect, believe it or not. Uh, no! And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's the, that's the cold hard truth right there. And I, I much prefer games that sort of embrace that flow of like, you fucked up, but you get to keep playing. And that's sort of why I was like, okay, so so what should happen when you get caught? How about you, the game completely shifts and you just have to beat the shit out of everyone who saw you. <laughs> and uh, and that's sort of, and then once, once you finish fighting, if you survive, you get to go back to sneaking because there's no one left who knew you were there. So that's sort of, that was, the, the beat-em-up mechanics were introduced as a solution to an issue I saw with a lot of games in the stealth genre. Am I going out on a limb by saying that it, it seems as though that was a starting point, but it's evolved a little bit since then? Because when I played it, it felt very much like I was being encouraged to pick my battles, you yeah. know? Mm, yeah. Like, it wasn't necessarily about not getting caught. It was about deciding when to get caught or initiate the fight myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. that, that definitely yeah. was something that, that evolved into that because we, we realized, like, it's like, oh, for fleshing out this side of the game so much, 
we probably want to build the game around like not necessarily avoiding combat completely, but just strat using stealth to strategize when to initiate it. So that's that that's exactly right. Yeah, that's sort of something that took shape over time. It was like, oh, this seems like the stealth that we're making is sort of a game of like isolation and like positioning and timing. I feel like it would also be weird for there to be so much thought and effort put into a part of the game that if uh, was not executed in the way it was, like, you know, if, if, if you went the more traditional stealth route with it, it would be very awkward to feel as though a game was discouraging you from engaged with half of its mechanics. Right. <laughs> so yeah. like you yeah. spent a lot of time <laughs> making feel really fun and good. Yeah. That was, um, that so, was yeah. actually something we had a hard time with was incentivizing people to do combat but actually more more so incentivizing people to engage with the stealth mechanics because yep. some players were just like you know they were just going balls to the wall fighting everyone just running through not even not trying to sneak attack or anything so and that this is a more recent thing we had to try and figure out a way to like not completely destroy our our systems because you know it was pretty close to to release so we just had to like figure out some way to be like okay yes you can fight stealth good what did you land on to encourage that well we ended up doing a combination of things one thing was that it was too easy to just kind of run around and not have to fight a lot of people because fighting like one guard at a time is not that hard so people would just run around get caught by one guy fight them go to the next guy so we adjusted the ai a bit of the of the enemies to make it more likely that if you get seen um, and you don't get away, that you might get into a battle with more enemies. So it, it's more difficult if you're just running around. And then also we adjusted how our like uh, style meter works because that that affects your um, your loot. Your loot is affected by the style meter that you you get points from you know punching and doing different combos and stuff. But we added a multiplier for when you get a sneak attack. So. You'll, you'll get like way better stuff from from sneak attacking than if you get caught. That would explain why I was playing so poorly. <laughs> <laughs> this guy does a read tutorials. Can you fucking believe it? This guy thinks that the other two people we're interviewing are assholes for putting two guy uh, guards right next to each other in front of level one dash two. <laughs> 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 Every single time. Everyone hates that that room of that level for that I reason. I hate that room. <laughs> yeah, I kind of hate oh, that goes a little mean with how I designed that. <laughs> I was actually wondering what your guys' previous experience in game dev was. Like, if this was your first game that you guys worked on, or if you came from different projects to give it to make this one. This was our first fully-fledged game, uh, but... Him and I worked on some game jams prior to this. Yes, yeah, us, us, uh, us two have been attempting to make games since like fifth grade. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but we finally <laughs> did one that wasn't shit. Yeah. <laughs> was this uh, was the concept from a game jam or was it just... Actually, the, the concept for the setting and characters was from a short film I made for college. That's so... That's not what I expected, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, How I was, the I hell was did so that sure. happen? Yeah, I was so sure it was going to be like, oh yeah, we did a game jam and then it turned into game. Big game. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm 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 going to college for for 3D animation actually. Uh for I it, can like tell a, based yeah. on the work in the game. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um yeah, so it's 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 film school, so I'm making short films over the course of of, you know, of my college career. And uh the first short film I made was Raw Metal. It it, it was just set in the same place with similar characters and it had a part where he was sneaking around and I had a part where everyone was fighting and it started from like I had to make like a character design for like a 3D modeling class and I was like oh I like uh you know industrial sci-fi settings like Titanfall and stuff so I'll come up with like an like off-world mining site and like what would a guard look like that would guard that mining site and then I just sort of branched out the the world and like you know, world building from there. And then I just came up with a, a short self-contained story for like a two minute short film, just had some stuff happen there. And then I just sort of left it for like a year, heard about uh, an opportunity with my college. It's like, hey, you could do an internship, a paid internship, where you pitch an idea for a game and then you get to work on it for a semester. And I was like, oh, wow. I bet I could adapt that short film I made way back into a pretty decent game. And uh, and so we came up with the, with the pitch and pitched it and we got it. So. That's how that happened. Is there anywhere people can see the short film or is it one of those things where it's old enough that you hate every single thing about it and wish that it was expunged from the world? <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's on YouTube. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure if you search raw metal, it does still pop up because I keep getting comments of like, wait a minute, this was a short film. <laughs> oh, that rules. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually going to ask, uh, cause you said that you got the opportunity to start making raw metal through your college. Um, I'm wondering, so it might, mu- it must've expanded from there, right? Cause, uh, it's it's gone on to be a full release now on on Steam. Like, how much of the development was was done in college, and then how much did you guys were like, okay, we need to actually expand on this and then keep making it into a real game or a full game? I mean, not a real game. Real yeah. game. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was a fake game before. Yeah, fake yeah. Game before, yeah. So it was a semester thing, and it was pretty cool. You know, we got an office space. We actually got to talk with some people from Rockstar Games. They had like a mentorship thing where I forget who was it like every two or three weeks we would talk to them and they would they would tell us uh you know your game game bad game too big make game smaller and then we would we would do it that that's an interesting advice from Rockstar yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like game make it smaller is always the one thing you're gonna hear with any mentorship because I remember do, when I was in film it was always like make it smaller make it smaller yeah. oh my god yep. you're dumbass Yep. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> yeah. pretty much pretty much every time. Every time we met, there's with them. one saying I can't remember what it is, but it's like it's it's like a term that everybody knows. It's like make it simple, dumbass, or whatever. Keep, keep it, it simple, simple stupid. stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, yeah kiss. kiss. Yeah, kiss. mine was way meaner, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but that was really cool. If it wasn't for them, the game would probably not be out uh, right now. Yeah, it also probably would not be good. Yeah, uh, you should have seen <laughs> you know, the if, gadget if you think system. It's good, I mean, I, don't know. I there there was there yeah was, the gadget system was something. there was one night where like I couldn't sleep and so at four in the morning I came up with uh, an idea uh, that would derail us for a good like three or four weeks uh, mm. <laughs> and because uh, we were trying to figure out how we wanted gadgets to work and so I came up with this like whole system where you could like assemble your own gadgets by like. With different like deployment methods like oh it can bounce or it can stick into walls and then it has like different payloads like tasers or concussion grenades or like sensors that can detect guards and it's like and so zach walked in the next morning to me just like in front of a whiteboard that i looked like an insane man where oh, i just had God. diagrams drawn out and i was like look zach i i, I fixed it I, I i figured it out and, and we, <laughs> we made this like way overly complicated system that was supposed to save us work because it was easy to implement it but it just overcomplicated it overcomplicated the game to an insane degree mm. where like no one could figure out how it worked and it was just too much for the game we were trying to make um, and that was a uh, rockstar just basically said guys this is this is just getting in. worse <laughs> worse <laughs> <than> <laughs> really worse. <laughs> you cannot do this cuz like the previous meeting they had told us to scope down they were like it's it's or they had said like oh it's not working <laughs> like the gadgets don't feel right like they don't mesh well with the rest of the systems so we were like okay we have to make a solution to gadgets so we did that and then they were like guys this is not what we meant what <laughs> That's are you doing so funny <laughs> uh, but we figured it out and then we were like okay cool it's the end of the semester um let's try and do it again so we can keep getting a little bit of funding and the office space and then they were like. Yeah, this was only this is only a one semester thing. You can't apply for a second semester. Didn't you know this? Mm. And we were like, we we're like, no. Surprise! In fact, I was led to believe otherwise. But all right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I th- I guess we didn't read very well or something. Yeah, you know? that, that was probably it. Honestly, us gamers, us gamers, gamers can't read. We already said that. Um, developers aren't gamers. Everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> we are above you. <laughs> oh, oh no. Uh, <laughs> But basically, we we were just like, okay, well, we'll keep making the game. What exactly happened? We we so we, we let we they let us semester. use the space. Yeah, we yeah. Took, we took another semester off of classes to keep working on it, and they let us still use the office space. We just weren't getting funding. Um, yeah, which was really nice. I mean, that's of them. something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were very gracious about it, uh, and they also let us go to PAX with them, which was also very nice. Yes. Um, although I think we were separate because we were in PAX Rising, but they the school still paid for our hotel or something yeah okay um which was big i i I was curious as to um how the office space specifically helped you guys out because you're i mean i'm sure you know here and there you had assistance but for the most part it's just you two doing the bulk of the work on the game right yeah i mean him and i were full-time and we had uh like a part-time 3d artist who made all the models and rigs and textures and everything Uh, and then we also later brought on a community manager um who was also part-time but yeah, Zach and I were basically just like 
like we were just handling pretty much all the development in that office basically the whole time. Like it wasn't, there was no like staff from our school who were like assisting with development or anything like that. They were just kind of like, here, here's your pot of desks. Here's a whiteboard. Um, make sure to show up for a meeting in, with Rockstar in three weeks. Good luck. And basically just let, let us do our thing. For me, it was nice because my computer is not very strong. So it was nice to have an actual mm -hmm. like good office computer. But aside they from that, had it was giant, wasn't, giant it wasn't walk like, on tablets. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They, they gave you like actual hardware as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. they didn't give it. They, okay. they, they rented it out, right? You know what right. I mean, yeah. you pedantic little shit. <laughs> they shithead. actually gave me a 3090 just for being nice. Oh, man. <laughs> but I mean, they had, all, they had uh, all the good software and stuff. So, I mean, that was useful. It wasn't like strictly necessary, but it, it was nice um, to just okay. have. If, it makes it feel like a real job, too. Software is so fucking expensive. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I know you say that half jokingly, but there's something to be said about having the your mindset. work be in a, a designated place yes. and going there to do oh, it. Oh, my God. Yes. As opposed to, so you know. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Working out of your bedroom. Yeah, 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 that's what, dude. When I when I went from working, like, dude, working from my bedroom, I would sometimes just wake up, go directly to my computer, and start shit working. Yourself. And that shit was. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I really that shit myself. We gotta stop with this. <laughs> I would wake up, shit myself, go to the computer and work, and it was like not, dude. That is a terrible mindset. You're gonna go <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yeah, having yeah, a separate yeah. space for your studio is like pretty damn important if you can if you can do it though that's the thing not everybody mm. has this space absolutely yeah. which is why your your school specifically giving that to you mm -hmm. even after the, the semester is just really nice to hear yes that. absolutely yeah. it, it, it worked wonders like that that second semester especially we got so much done yeah like yeah. It, it was because it, i i didn't have classes because my my class schedules relied on me graduating in the summer so when I was mm -hmm. like offset by a semester, I'm like, I can't like none of my classes are available that I need to take. So I have to take another semester off. So I guess I'll just work on the game. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. It's a, I had nothing else to do. So mm, the wow. fact that I had that office space, if I didn't have that, that whole semester, I would have just been in my room and that would have been a nightmare. <laughs> uh, uh, can't can't relate to. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, but also just having your team like right next to you. So I could just like lean over to Zach and be like, how are we going to do this? And then we could just spend like five minutes drawing on the whiteboard trying to figure it out. It's like, OK, that's how we do that. And then we sit back down and keep working. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just I, it's so ideal. Nice. Just yeah. perfect scenario for that kind of work. There's yeah. a lot to be said for remote work, but also like just being in person makes things go by very fast because you can just, you yeah. know, yep. it's just like turn around and be like, hey, fuck face. How do I do this? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. It's so yeah. quick. Yeah. So uh, reliable. <laughs> was that a big decision for you guys to keep going after that first semester without any like funding and stuff like that? Like, was it was it a case where you guys realized you had something there? There was like, okay, we we actually really have to make this game because like there's something here and and we got to do it. Or what, like, what was what went into the decision making for that to to keep going and and try and uh, finish the game? It, How much it, of it was Stockholm? <laughs> <laughs> it actually like. When, when I first went into it, I was like, it, I wanted it to be way smaller of a project than it is now. Because I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I want to be, after this like year of development, I want to be done so that I can focus on like my capstone short film uh, that mm -hmm. I'm going to be developing for the year after that. Uh, I don't want to be working on this game and that at the same time. Spoiler alert. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I am now <laughs> doing that and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> or at least I was doing that up until release. Uh, and now I am just working. Yeah, on it. you don't really have to do anything else on the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, so like the fact that we decided to keep working on it anyway, it was because we had worked out a lot of the kinks during that first year. And we realized like, OK, no, this game could be pretty good if we like actually finish it. So we we like didn't just leave it there. And it was also like I wanted to I wanted to have that experience under my belt before I graduated. Um, mm -hmm. Just so it's like, OK, I want the full pipeline. So I have experience with from like first idea to release so that I, I know what the whole business is. Right. And uh, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And it has been huge. We had also we'd also been planning already on 
having that semester off from classes to work on it because we were assuming that we would get another semester. <laughs> and so we, I mean, we weren't signed up, we weren't enrolled in classes. So we were like, well, I mean, we can, like we could have still, still enrolled, but it was past the normal date. So you we could like, still well, enroll. You know, I didn't have the you classes have I needed because, to graduate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause they weren't giving them in spring. Right. So there wasn't much of a choice for Corrigan. Mm. Uh, for me, I, I was kind of like, well, I don't really want to stop working on the game for for like a whole half year because I'm going to forget how everything works. So I would rather <laughs> yeah. just like and, and if if Corgan's working on it then I want to also be working on it at the same time cuz we kind of the the pipeline of it we kind of have to both be doing stuff in order for things to get implemented. Yeah. No, I, I can't imagine juggling that having one person get a whole bunch of stuff lined up and hoping that it all just fits and plugs in with no issue whenever the other person has time yeah. and the other one is busy so they cannot yeah. troubleshoot when things inevitably don't do that a, a lot of the um a lot of that stuff between our like development roles was like because a lot of my work for like say the animation was done outside unity it, uh, like I was just animating in Maya with the rigs provided to me by Pavel, our artist. And but then I would also have to like export the animations from Maya and bring them into Unity. Oh, into man, Unity's fuck ass animation system, yeah. which would break all the time. <laughs> and uh, stop like, being mean to Unity. It's bad. <laughs> they no. did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Name one thing they've done. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. Oh my god. Uh but yeah, like it, so it's it's it was just like all right, I got to I got to set up the animation control in Unity and uh, like set up all the animation events and then like Zach's got to make sure I actually did everything right and then be like, "Hey, this animation isn't transitioning correctly." And then I have to go back and fix that. So the fact that we were both working at the same time was huge with the amount of animations that all the characters had to do and the amount of transitions between those animations. It was um yeah, we would not be able to like asynchronously work on anything. Dude, I'm just thinking about the cutscenes, like because <laughs> they have to have their origin point set at a specific location. Oh yeah. Like uh, if you made all of those ahead of time, you would have had to edit way more files because like it was good because we were able to catch it early on like the second boss, and I was like, okay, no, we need to have them positioned at this point for for everything, and then the rest of them were fine because you already knew that. Right. But like. Yeah. Imagine if you made all of them and they were at the wrong <laughs> origin point and you had to redo all the... All the just like have to like go in and just move everything. Yeah, no, that would have been a, that would have been a nightmare. So you guys said that you added two people onto the team part-time. Uh, was it a community manager and an animator, did you say? Um, it was... Uh, first, it was a 3D artist. So 3D it artist, was sorry. all of the models and textures and like rigged characters and everything were all done by Pavel. He also did some of the VFX and stuff. Yes, shaders. yes. He also did some some shader VFX stuff. Uh, he took the time to like, you know, animate all like the UI for the screens on the monitors and everything, which looks super sick. Yeah, they scale really well too. I was playing on an ultra wide and it was seamless. Oh, nice. You don't usually <laughs> see for games of this uh, of this scale. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So the 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 UI for the game was Zach. Uh, the UI on, I was talking about in the environment, like the CRT screens, like on the desks and everything, like he added like different ones for all of those. Oh, and okay. if you got to the first boss, that giant wall of screens has like, you know, animated like monitors for lights. It's like, oh, look, it's all the security cameras and all the levels and stuff like that. He added a ton of detail into like the environments and stuff. And, uh, and he was only part-time because he works extremely fast like yeah. I would, I would, <laughs> me or zach would draw him something be like hey can you make this character and then like two days later he'd be like i made the character <laughs> be like wait <laughs> what um yeah. but yeah no uh and then later we brought on james who first started i was as our like social media manager and community manager um so he made like a bunch of like graphics and stuff for uh for like events that we were going to or things that we were doing he was like just helping with all the PR stuff. Uh, and then later, when uh, when we were kind of in the thick of development and we were trying to make all the levels, he was a, a placement artist, I think is the term, where, you know, you take pre-made, like, models and assets, like props and stuff, and just populate the rooms with them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of um, the second layer of the game was, like, was his doing where he was, like, placing all the, all the plants and all the things on the desks and, like, stuff like that. Shout out to community managers. 
The yeah. amount, it's like hey. the amount of time that they save you is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's it's insane. Like I was like, ah, I can handle it, and then I was like, yeah, I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we did um, bring on another animator later as well. Yes, that was that was oh, also really? what I was going to mention because late in development, I was like, okay, I'm coming up on this huge project for school that I'm going to need to be animating, and I also still have like the second half of the game to animate because i've been busy with other stuff until now i might need to bring on another animator uh because this is uh this is getting a little dicey what kind of stuff were you getting hung up on uh i was getting hung up hung up on uh i think it was it was a lot of voice acting stuff because i was um trying to cut up a lot of audio edit a lot of audio um there was some production stuff that i think i was working on uh some sound design stuff uh and then also school on top of that and then i was like okay i think i can get back into the thick of animation and then i was like there is still a lot to do and i don't know if i can do it but luckily one of our voice actors uh specifically one of the voice actors for the main character happened to be an extremely talented 3d animator and <laughs> so i was like hey do you want me to bring you on as like a full employee instead of just getting like a bonus for the for the for the voice acting work you're doing? And the reason I uh, I decided to hire him was because I was like he he had offered to like do a little bit of like help a little bit with like an occasional animation here or there, and I was like, oh, that's that's nice of you. But then when I realized like I'm gonna need a lot of help, I'm like, okay, no, I'm hiring you. <laughs> and I was like, can you do like? A combat intro animation for me um just to like just as like you know to, to to see sort of where your strengths are and everything like that and he was like yeah sure and he animated the suplex animation Ooh, in the game yeah. for oh that, that, well, that one's so good it's so That's good great. it's like my favorite combat intro in the game and i was like all right next <laughs> <laughs> next i need you to animate all this other stuff because that was fantastic and you're hired. <laughs> yeah, the, the amount of times I have been in that exact position. That, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I do that more than just hiring people normally. Yeah, it's like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Did the school actually pay for the uh, for the employees? Or was that out of pocket? Uh, that was out of pocket. Um, okay. It was basically like, they gave us a stipend uh, for like our working hours. Okay. And... Um, and then the Patreon money is going towards the the voice actors, and um, basically our whole team are, was just working on revenue share. Okay. Um, mm. So it's just like we're basically just staring at Steam right now to give us <laughs> give us our money. <laughs> Whatever money the game, the game makes, we, we we shall split it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. So you guys never got like a uh, any other funding like outside of the school or any publishers or anything like that contact you? Uh, publishers did contact us, but our timeline was too short for them. Like we were gotcha. contacted by we, we we talked with Raw Fury actually, and uh, and they were like, yeah, this looks cool, but like you're like it was like six or seven months away from release, so mm. uh, so they were like, we can, we really can't do anything right now. Okay. Um, gotcha. yeah, so we just I mean, decided for this one like it's like okay first project relatively small project let's just release it ourselves see how okay. it goes yeah i've heard i've heard that a lot as of late i mean specifically with the publisher and the uh their timeline is uh <laughs> it's looking it's looking insane uh in terms of short and mid-term projects right now so mm -hmm. well it's worked out decently well so far at least yeah uh it was i think what what it was was like so we had like a major update we had a demo on steam Yes. And we had a major update coming out for that demo that basically made the demo content complete. So it was the first three levels and the first boss because we had just finished the first boss and the third level. And so we were like, all right, so this is like, this is a pretty big update. I was like, I feel like making a making a trailer. And this was around the time when like our original, I think we had like a Halloween release date, like loose release date that we were kind of telling people uh, up until that point. Um, and we were like, okay, well, we're de that's definitely not happening. But it's around that time, so I think we're going to want to, like, tell people for sure when the game is coming out. So I asked Zach, I was like, how much longer do you need? And he was like, we could probably do March. And I was like, all right. And we came up with the with date of March 19th, and I just threw that at the end of a trailer I whipped up from just oh, God. some, like, <laughs> from some, like, uh, clips in the game of stuff that I thought looked cool. And that trailer 
uh, now has, I think, over 500,000 views on YouTube. <laughs> oh, God. And I was like, well, <laughs> locked in. <laughs> so how'd that go? That that went well. We were we were locked in, and then we had to lock in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, it, it went well because we, I think Zach did a good job at evaluating his abilities to, like, develop the game and, like, code everything in time. And, like, because we still had a few bosses to make and uh it was uh we did do it we were pretty much on track the whole time we were like it was getting a little stressful a little crunchy towards the end mm-hmm. yeah but that trailer is sort of the reason we got like 99 percent of the traction that we did because that completely blew up and put us on the radar yeah, I, that it's that is such a skill uh, being able to accurately predict long term how long it will take you to make something so uh, the fact that you pretty much nailed it, the both of you, is uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, f- I felt so bad for Zach, though, because that last month he was just like in total, just just in the zone, just total crunch. But I was like, I mean, I'll is be there honest, anything I can we, do? <laughs> we probably should have had another month or so. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think that's the, the real bastard. Most games. Yeah, <laughs> I, the real bastard of it, though, is like... <sighs> If you did have that extra month, what are the odds you'd be saying it then? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 How much do you guys feel the Steam Next Fest and having a demo impacted like the visibility of the game? Because uh, that was one of the ways that I first yeah. uh, found out about it. It was pretty big. I yeah. think we already had a lot of wish lists, but mm-hmm. it definitely, I mean, it, it was big. Yeah. yeah. Our Most of our wish lists actually came from that trailer. Um, we had gotcha. about one or two thousand before the trailer, and then after the trailer blew up, we shot up to about twenty five thousand. That's huge! Um, wow! Yeah, it was pretty insane. And then uh, the the uh, next fest boosted us like I think another five thousand okay. ish. Oh. Next fest was also really big for for getting feedback. Um, yes, and yes. finding bugs because we got a lot of people like actually actively playing it and talking in our discord server and sending us issues and stuff i would be interested to hear how that compares to uh the uh, physical events that you went to like you know mag Fest. Mag. <laughs> i mean because that's how that's how we discovered you guys is we actually played the game in person and talked yeah, to you guys I, 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 I saw the best blind. i believe i saw I the best by employee me walk up i was like yo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, be- I believe you flagged me down as i was walking by yeah i definitely was not there at the time that is so sad <laughs> but yeah no it 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 helped a lot with like honestly numbers wise because i was watching like the steam wish list numbers like that whole time and i would say like we we pax was before the trailer and that was like a mm. spike of maybe like a few hundred people wishlisting the game um and then magfest i think was about the same actually like next fest and the trailer going viral were like way way more in terms like in terms of the numbers but going to events like pax and magfest honestly it, it was good for like feedback as well but more than anything just like being able to present the game to people in front of you in person and watching them like get excited about it and ask you questions face to face was yeah, like the morale. The morale, the morale boost was insane. Like I think we all needed that. Like to like <laughs> see in front of us in meat space people enjoying the thing that we're making. <laughs> mm. uh, meat yeah. space. Meat space. Yeah, that was that was. Uh, I think that was huge for us. I think that like that's that's the number one reason to uh to attend those events what the downsides of watching someone play your game who's who's fresh to it can be though oh man but i mean just, <laughs> just ha- ha- the resisting the urge to backseat yeah, gotta, exactly. help you, yeah. <laughs> gotta help you like develop the tutorials surely though you're like okay yes. I, need to, oh, I need to have yeah. a pop-up for that <laughs> so at pax first of all the game was pretty buggy at pax um mm-hmm. but the tutorial was like we had just like updated it a little bit so it was it was supposed to be kind of revamped but it still had some glaring issues that we had not realized beforehand so people were playing it and getting stuck at parts on the tutorial or like not understanding things or something would break and i was like fuck i have to fix it <laughs> so i 
I had my laptop at PAX and I would just like go to a hallway or something. Oh my God. And, like make a patch for the game and put it on a flash drive. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. We were there. There was one day where we were there for like four hours and we kept seeing this bug keep popping up. And I was just watching like person after person come up and like encounter this bug. I was like, oh yeah, that you know, that's, drive that's you a bug. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh and then Zach God. was just like, fuck it. And he just took his laptop, vanished for an hour and came back. <laughs> it's like, all right, it's fixed. <laughs> I wonder, did that cause problems for you later on? Like, were those Band-Aid fixes that had to be untangled? Oh, I'm kind of curious about that as well, actually. Uh, not really. I mean, the tutorial was, like, completely redone uh, before Next Fest. Mm. So any issues that were part of the stuff from PAX were pretty much just removed. Like, we had issues with, uh, well, I guess there was the one thing that was, like, there, there, there were some issues with the the thing where it like slows down, basically halts the game, and there's a pop up that tells you to press a button, like like a, a reaction thing where it's like press this button to dodge right as the enemy's swinging at you. I forget what exactly the problems were, but there were some issues with that at PAX. I did not completely fix them because when I was redoing it for Next Fest, I we kept that in for part of it, uh, but there were still some issues with it. So I did have to redo a couple things, but it, it was nothing big. Most of the stuff was kind of thrown out or changed. Um, yeah, there there were a ton of like things that we were just having to write down. Yeah, of just like, all right, this is the fifth person in a row who didn't know that you could do this. We need to make that clear. But to be honest, the PAX tutorial <laughs> it, it sucked. It really sucked. It yeah. left out like key mechanics, like launches and wall splats. I think just weren't explained at all uh, in the original tutorial. It was like a straight line where it's like it taught you like the bare minimums to like know how the game works and even then it was in like walls of text that everyone skipped uh right. so we were like okay we will not let you play the game until you attack the guard with all four types of attacks because too many people just didn't know that you could hold down the button to do a heavy attack and stagger guards which is like a key like you can't beat the game without knowing that and it was like we need to like literally force them to execute these attacks so that they prove that they can do it now that you've said that now i really want to beat the game without doing that that I would be interesting um, that would be an awful run that would be hellish a friend of of one of the developers uh refuses to uh to dodge or parry for whatever reason and is trying to beat the game by just beating the shit out of everyone unreal like relentlessly <laughs> There's, there's no way. There's no way. I don't think it's possible. He did beat you the first boss. It. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you can do it if you use a lot of running attacks, because they, because you can like, especially with that, with that boss, you can, uh, you can slide under him and he won't hit you. Yeah. I'm taking Ooh, notes. You can slide <laughs> under people. You can't slide yeah. under the attack, <laughs> but you can slide through him while he's attacking, and then the attack will miss. How, uh, how the hell do you slide? Uh, you, do, uh, you guys need kick. more tutorials. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. yeah. So, so there are running attacks in the game. There's a running punch and a running kick. We don't teach those because a lot of the time they're not super necessary to the core fighting mechanics, but they do. They're like they're a helpful extra tool. So when people discover them in game, it's like, whoa, wait a minute! I didn't know I could do that. And they are uh, also yeah. they're in the tips, but nobody reads those. So it's nobody fine. reads the yeah. tips, so they may as well not be there. I'm just gonna ask the yeah. uh, last question just before we uh, wrap up. I, I'm wondering what are some of the biggest lessons you guys have learned from your time developing uh, raw metal that you're gonna? I mean, ho I hopefully you guys are gonna keep making games uh, from now on. But what what kind of lessons have you are gonna bring forward? Uh, from from your time on Raw Middle, me personally, I think a huge thing. I, <laughs> me when uh, I personally learned that, like, uh, honestly, there's there's a ton of times where like you're gonna get stuck and uh, you're not gonna like know why something isn't working. And then like basically anything you do that you enjoy doing is gonna end up turning out the best. Like the stuff you make that you genuinely like and you like making and you like the end product. That's like, in my experience with this project and with previous projects, is always the stuff that turns out the best and that you're most proud of. So whenever you get stuck on something, you know, focusing on why you're doing this and stuff that you enjoy doing, pivoting away from the stuff that you're getting stuck on, that can really help with like getting yourself past that wall and like keeping yourself motivated. And I think that, uh, you know, an idea you like 
is always going to be better than a a good idea, if that makes sense. Mm. <laughs> that and and just um, managing a team is hard. Uh, you need to factor in a lot of things at once, and you need to understand the people you're working with and uh, and how to like meet them on their level so that they can do their job. You need to understand their job so that you know what you're telling them isn't stupid. Uh, <laughs> and uh, like, Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm so glad that we all like have a decent understanding of how all the different aspects of the project are set up. Yeah. Like if you and me didn't know anything about 3D modeling or like if... Paul didn't know how to actually put a thing in Unity. It would have been so awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Zach? What did you learn? From yes. This? The real raw metal was the friends we made along the way. Shut oh, the fuck up. Yes. Get him the yes. No, that's Get so out of here. <laughs> that's so true. No, um, I learned. Well, I mean, I kind of say this after every project, so I don't know if I actually did learn it, but uh, <laughs> everything always takes longer than you think it will. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's something I already knew, but just I, I never actually, I never actually I mean, think judging, about it. Judging by the March release date story, it's you're starting to internalize. Yeah, you're that getting one. it. Yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, only yeah. set a date that was one month. All you need is you all you need is higher stakes. <laughs> higher yeah. stakes, um, and then you learn. I think I learned that I like uh, I like programming a lot of different things, but I would like to have more people. To help, <laughs> cool. not this just to help me, by not just to help guy. me, but like just in general, I think that having more people uh, is a, probably a good thing. But not too many people. I think we could have like we could have like three more people. Yeah, just yeah. so you can get like you can get ideas, feedback, and feedback. Yeah. All right, I'm, yeah. I'm cheating a little. I'll ask one more question. Oh man, um, such an ass. <laughs> <laughs> is that something you guys are looking for in the future? Are you looking to expand the team and and uh, buff up the amount of people on your on your team for your next project? Yeah, probably a little bit at least. Just like mm. a couple more people, like Zach said, I think would would yeah. go a long way because we've had to wear a lot of hats. Like Zach mm -hmm. did the UI and the music and the programming. Yeah, yeah. I think having someone dedicated to sound design would be nice as well. That, like, that just, too. <laughs> There are just a lot of things that you don't necessarily think about when you're first going into the project that would yep. be nice to have a dedicated person for. Yeah, but yeah, like I mean, fucking sucks. yeah, I don't think any of us can relate to uh, a project scaling up un unexpectedly, though. That's kind of like a unique problem. <laughs> that, I think you guys only have ever yeah. experienced. Hey, when's the next video coming out? <laughs> <laughs> don't. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kurgan and uh, Zach, for coming on the show. Uh, everyone can check out Raw Metal on Steam. Any plans to go to other platforms? Or are you guys just keeping it on PC at the moment? We'd uh, sure as hell like to, but we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> okay, <gotcha. laughs> so, yeah, thanks again, guys, for coming on. Yeah, thank of you course. for having thank us. Thank you for having us. Do you guys cool. have a Twitter? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it is at Raw Metal Game on Twitter. Okay, welcome back. That was a great. Oh God, why did I start like that? Welcome back to First Start Turbo. Oh, now we're ready to talk about Kenshi. Are we ready? As requested by the Patreon. If you want to have a say in what we play next, you can join the Patreon. There should be a vote up by the time this episode comes out. I don't know what what is going to be in there, but isn't that exciting? You get Yo, to pick the games that you find out. You requested. Don't you want to find out, you little bitch? Oh. Sorry, I got really aggressive. I fucking I it's Kenshi. But yeah, Kenshi. All right. First, we um, should go through uh, everybody and let everyone know how much we've all played. Um, I can start. I played yeah. just over five hours, and which is like nothing for this game. I, I will have no, to say, no, it's nothing. Um, yeah, no, we um, to, we we did we did delay this episode so that we could play even more. And I'm gonna be honest, like I I feel like it's one of those games that you pro we probably should have fucking uh, at least spent a lifetime for it to get interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah. How much did you play, Billy? <laughs> played played seven okay. hours and uh i played seven hours but i did i did uh i i did redo it three times i think everybody I had, probably did that i i had like two characters before that i were a mess and then i at one point i was like this is gonna i i, I 
if I want to do like a proper playthrough, I'm probably gonna have to get into a fuck it. I'm I'm gonna stream the game and just ask people to help me out, and that's when I got to a character where I kind of knew what I was doing. So, and then yeah, no. Uh, twenty three hours. Twenty three hours. Oh, so you put quite a bit into it. I put I put quite a bit. In. I mean, I played this before, or I attempted to play it before. Yeah. Well, uh, like on my own, um, and then I played it for a bit, and then just kind of popped out of it. Um, yeah. but then for this, I made sure that I put at least, uh, about, I want to say 20 hours in, um, and I figured it out. -ish. I just want to say like in general, this is more time than we usually, we can usually allow for this production. Cause I mean, the, the, Every every episode of Press Start Turbo comes with the caveat that when you vote on a game, you have to understand that this is usually for it's usually first impressions. Like we cannot, we have an episode coming out every two weeks bi weekly. We can't afford to have like as much time as we usually like for a normal playthrough yeah, we're not, of the game. We're not gonna have a it's a, it's a like, yeah, no, it's not. A, it's game. never gonna be. It's never gonna be a com comprehensive. It's always first impressions, unless we played the game. In which case, like, of course, we can talk yeah. about it more. But so, yeah, Tim? Uh, I've got like 15 hours in it. I, I'm like Brandon too. I've tried playing it a couple of times. Uh, I, I just, I get a couple hours into a run, and then I just kind of bounce off it. Mm. The early game is such a slog and mind numbing that it, like, I want to love this game. Uh, it looks really fun, really cool, but then actually playing it is not fun. Are any of the rest of you, did any of the rest of you uh, get through early game? I mean, okay, okay but what, what is you, the early game? This, what do you discern as being early game? Like, when does that end? Like, is it, is it when it gets interesting? When you finally or? find a quest. When you there find are quests quest? in the game? There are quests in the game. I don't know about that. It, there, there are I full mean, NPCs with full there, quest lines in the video game at certain hubs. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the fucking thing, right? It really depends on where... I'm, you have to actually... The problem is, is you have to spend so much time to be able to get your character to the point where you can get to one of the hubs and talk to one of the characters to start one of the quests. I mean, I... I Because I, I did get to one, but I was... I'm not at a place where I could do the quest, so I just told the guy, like, well, no, I can't do it. Sorry. And then I went back to mining. That's not true. I went back to fucking training. Um, yeah. All right. Just getting hit. Yeah, there are, there are quests, though. It's a, it's a true sandbox. Brendan, since you have the most experience in the game, can you just give a brief overview of it or a be brief just like what this game is for people who haven't played it? Because I think that is important before we start discussing about like our opinions on it and stuff like uh, that. If I was to put myself in the mind of a Kenshi fan, the first thing I would say as I take a hit from my vape and walk into the GameStop to talk to the girl behind the counter who works there because she totally <laughs> fucking likes me is I would take a hit from my vape and say, can't choose a video game where you're not the hero. Uh -huh. Oh my god! Fuck that is, you. you. You're that's. It is it's a, perfect. It's a sandbox it RPG where you don't matter, and that's like the whole sell of it, right? Like yeah, the cell, the cell is you are a character in this world, but so is everybody else. Everybody else can be at that level. Uh, to be able to get to the point where you would be in any other video game, you have to spend an obnoxious amount of time either grinding or getting lucky or going through the like the motions of um, uh, the minor minutia of like normal day-to-day, -day, like average, like hit rock life to be able to get to the point where you're cool. Yes, which for me was hit rock, uh, put it on 3x speed, and then open up a fucking a podcast movie. on my fucking yeah. second monitor. Yeah, watch Babylon Five on my on my side monitor while my character hits rocks, and then yeah, I I will say a boon uh, was buying a house and buying the training equipment and like researching yes. training equipment yep. so that I could then actually like just have my character work on skills. <laughs> it, it, this game is okay. Getting destroyed. I fucking realized what we, this we game gotta is. We got to talk about this game is RuneScape, RuneScape for grinding. masochists. Yeah, that's what no, I was going to say. Actually, I was going to bring it to RuneScape. No, yeah, that, that that's what I was streaming this to some friends because I mean, I was in a voice call for most of it. I was either in a voice call or watching a movie because this I fucking listen, I hate this game. I I think this game fucking blows completely so my grandma boring. would love to steal my abyssal whip out of my character's inventory in this game it, it's just so mind-numbingly boring and every time i would think about like every time somebody would tell me like oh well now now you're now that you've you you're done spending four hours grinding you can build a base and every single time in my head i was like okay but why it's so 
It, it's so directionless, and I guess I guess that's the that's point. That's the point. Is it's a true but sandbox? It's, yeah, but true sandbox is boring as fuck. I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I it, they could have made it interesting if it wasn't mind numbing to fucking grind. Because the thing is, for people who haven't played Kenshi, every single there's like. How many stats? A jillion. 30, 20? Who fucking knows? A build, uh, like, and the way that you get those stats up is by, like in, like in uh, Oblivion, by doing this stat. So athletics, you have to run. Mm. Uh, labor, you have to mine or do intensive work. Uh, toughness, to get more health, to get stronger, you have to get hit. You have to get your ass kicked, yeah, without losing a limb. To get your, yeah, get your ass kicked without dying. And uh, if you start alone in the game, well fuck you you're gonna press that fucking reload thing a bunch mm -hmm. i it's i don't know man i don't understand yeah, well, yeah the half of my game was spent hitting iron F <laughs> and then hitting and, f5 and, and, and then running back hopefully not getting killed by a roving band of gang uh bandits because i'm at max weight but I'm leveling strength, you don't understand. Your problem was you were hitting iron and you weren't hitting copper instead because you needed more money. But, like, I understand you were leveling strength, so you need to carry the iron so that it weighs more. Well, copper, oh cop, the problem with is, is that the iron that I was mining was in a very safe spot. And the copper that I could find, there was, like, a bandit group that would roam yeah. past it every, like, ten minutes. So you want that to happen though, because you want them to kick your ass so you can gain toughness. Yeah, but then, but when I tried doing that, Brendan, I would just die. Okay, <laughs> like, but did you carry? Die. Did you carry bandages you with you? Bandages? Oh, oh my god! Did you spend five thousand dollars? But if for I'm one unconscious, medicine? what the fuck am I gonna do with the bandages? Well, you're gonna well, you wait until you're unconscious, and then you gotta hope that when you get out of the unconscious state, you can walk away, and then you can heal your wounds and go back to town and try to rest in a cot or a bed. If you have money, dumbass. I've actually, you know what the did you start worst as human, spot was? Cameron? Yeah, I started as human. There's actually, there's, there, were you in the hub? Mm -hmm. uh, there's literally a bar right down the road that has a free bed in it, too. Yeah, no, I know. Do you, do you know what the worst part is? Is I built my house right next to the bar and then I researched how to build like a camp bed and then I placed it down. And the material you need to get a camp bed is a uh, sleeping bag. Yep. And, I, ha and yep. I couldn't find a sleeping bag or craft a sleeping bag. On my you own. Have to go to a, you have to go to the swamp I, town. They have a. Yeah. Yep. No, you don't. You don't have to. You, as long. I mean, it depends where you were. Were you in Mongrel? I don't know. Is that the, <laughs> I'm in the hub. Okay. <laughs> You're in the hub. I, you have to be. I. I. Yeah. You have to go to Swamp Town. Yeah. Swamp Town is Mongrel. That's the. That's like. It's so strange because like. No. Swamp I, Town I, is when shark. When I started. Wait. What? Swamp Town is shark. But that. I thought the swamp was where the fog was. No, because that's a, where no, Mongrel there, is, and Mongrel different. is where everything is. No, there's a completely. You are in a very, very small, tiny part of the map. The map is it, Billy. The map is gigantic. <laughs> no, I know, I know, because I, I got to the point. I mean, I got to the point where I was just I, I I was getting really bored of doing nothing, so I just started exploring. Because Jesus Christ, the the map oh, is and, uh, massive, which is definitely a positive. I like all the different uh like areas. I do not like beaked things. I did one thing that I really liked is that when I was able after like uh I don't know like uh, six hours of grinding, I was able to actually walk around and run around and see things and not get killed because i was faster than the things that wanted to kill me so that was interesting i do think the lore is interesting like um mm. i i met a robot called beep i talked to him and he i told him hi, I, he, he beeped at me and i said hi mr beep <laughs> and then he said how did you know my name and i said let's become friends and then we had sex <laughs> um you can have six? No. Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get my fucking toughness high enough to get the sex mini game. This I is tell you. very much a video game that is mostly about uh, trying to tell your own story with your character. And the only thing I've been able to do with my character is uh, the martial artist turned landlord while I slowly buy out buildings in the hub. That's like. <laughs> I mean, I, I I I get I get that, but I I genuinely think that. There's no point to the starting grind. There's literally no point to the starting grind. Except it, for it to be difficult and because like you are nobody, it, like that's the point to it. Some some oh, people like off. that because they can they can be like, okay, so I came from nothing and now that you know, it's yeah, part of the story that I you're understand crafting for yourself. That part of the game. Like I don't. It's I don't so like boring. it. Billy, I I, th I find it boring as well because I it feels to me like I'm doing something with no direction. Like I get that you're it's like, you know, make your own own way in the world but i just 
the, to, for me, I mean, the other I've thing is like the, so many. I played so many sandbox games that it, it's not about having no direction. It's about the game pushing you to engage with its mechanics in a way that, where you can create your own stories, right? Because that's the problem with this game. It's just I. You have to engage it. There, you have to go on the. It's a wiki game, and I think that's the worst mm. type of fucking video game ever. It's so yeah. boring. That was the other thing is that it's it's a it's a game with a shit ton of systems. Yeah, and they they're in, listen. They are interesting. We can't fucking. We're not going to pretend like this game has nothing to it. This game has so much to it. Is it is a super. It is a freak core game. Yeah, it's just that you, to engage with the systems is to go on wiki or to ask people who have played the game or to watch a fucking three hour long guide on Kenshi by some dude that has like a Walmart microphone that you can barely fucking understand what he's saying. It's so, it's so freak core, dude. I don't <laughs> can I, can I talk about one of my favorite things in this game though? Like Go I know I don't want to be like, I, I want to say nice things about Kenshi. I, I do think there are good things. It's just that we are the i mean i i i can i can see the fucking comments from a mile away like oh you didn't give it a proper shot and it's like yeah well i gave it fucking seven hours well, like man that's a lot and, and it's a game that you actually need to be fucking you need to be cognizant and aware of while you're be, playing yeah yeah 100 mm. right, brandon 100%. what's your what's the thing you like what is the best about kenshi and and why even though like fuck i hate i despise like the beginning of the game but once you get to the point where you could walk in a pool of enemies and your your martial arts so high that you're punching their arms off in one. It is funny. It is, funny it is actually hell fucking funny. To yeah. walk into a and wait. My bigger problem with the game is like, okay, now that I've gotten to the point where I'm strong enough to punch enemies like legs and arms off, what and I'm like buying buildings in the hub and I'm like exploring and going into different areas and trying to talk to NPCs. I'm like, I've only found one like basically quest line and it fucked up because somebody walked in that was um somebody walked into the bar that I was in while talking to the quest giver and they were hostile so it summoned the police and everybody in the bar started beating the shit out of each other and they fucking killed the quest giver and so I was like mm -hmm. I, I was trying to find out about the jackal gang but now the jackal gang hates me and I can't go to that swamp town now because some guy walked in with his dick out and he said hey I fucking hate these guys. And I'm like, I don't know what to, I, I like lost. I was like, oh, imagine if you were playing any other RPG and like Big Dick McFuckpants walked in and just started punching the shit out of the guy with the exclamation point above his head. And I was like, fuck this, fuck this, fuck this. There is like, I do think it's interesting because when I when I was playing, when I was streaming the game, because I every single time I, 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 I played the game or tried to get into it, I played a completely different, um, different start, I guess mm -hmm. you would call it. And every single time I started the game, I would talk to somebody and they'd be like, oh, the reason why you hate it is because you started in the worst possible spot. And it's like, man, every spot is the worst possible spot. Every, every Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like every spot is the worst spot. Except for maybe the hub. Mm. The, until you get to like mongrel or one of like start next to a hub. Oh, no, the town is called the hub. It's it's probably the best oh, starter town. I'm not the going hub? to lie. The town is a human town called the hub. I thought it was mongrel because mongrel has a bunch of free, a f bunch of free uh, party members that you can get no. that's where i got infinite wing wang which i i get I, i'm sure it i'm sure he's a meme because he's funny i just i just love the hub because all the buildings are destroyed so i've just been slowly buying the buildings out of the hub i didn't even know you could buy the buildings you can <clears> yeah what is what has been your uh your experiences with kinshi uh, frustrated that i can't get past the uh the wall that is early game because i i want to like kenshi i think kenshi looks cool it looks like a game that i would really enjoy but holy fuck do i get bored playing it that grind is i don't think in, like i'm sorry i know you keep saying like you guys keep saying like no it's necessary no it, i i'm not if it is no, necessary no, no, no. make it make it not as long it's 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 not that it needs to be like necessary i just wish that there was any kind of fucking direction at the start of the game other than here's the menu here's how you do it that is that is one of the things tina is about it is that it is just like you know people people will say that the reason why it's good is because it doesn't have direction that you can just do whatever the what the whatever the hell you want to do in it yeah but like for me, there needs to like because there I like games where you know there there are systems driven and you can just do whatever you want. 
but I, f- I feel like even in those the games that I do like, they do there's at least push. push you in a direction. There's a there's a moment where the game actually pushes you to engage with its mechanics in some way, shape, or form. Kenshi literally never does that. I, I, I fucking love games that do not give a shit about you as a player. Like, I, hmm. I talk about how much I love the Stalker games, because stalker does not give a shit about you you're just some guy i don't i don't think it's i i disagree i don't think it's as like stalker but stalker's fun and engaging stalker also stalker somebody who's also played stalker like anomaly in the blood stalker also has a clear path of what to do i don't i don't think it's as open it's not it's not stalker is not that uh, open of a game like realistically like it is open but even playing anomaly the amount i've put into anomaly like the fucking I want to say 120 hours I put into anomaly. But like good. even then, like there's a clear path of like get this so you can get this so you can do this so you can do this. Kenshi is way more open, um, but about the same amount of unforgiving. I, I honestly like the more I think about Kenshi, the more I like parts of it while I'm like engaging with it. But the second I put it away, I'm like fuck. I hate this game. Like if I wasn't playing Kenshi right now to like refresh myself on it, I would be much meaner. But Kenshi is a video game where I can say nice things as I play it because I do I do like a good amount of it. Yeah. Um, but that's just somebody who like I really want to be able to be like, this is my character. They are a martial artist. I want to get money so that I can buy out every building in the town, and then I want to see if I could charge people for rent and get people to come and live in this town. And <laughs> I want to build market stalls and shops and stupid shit. But also like that's I have to do that myself. I have to go in and I have to want to do that. Like I I there's nothing in the game that tells you this is what you do. Even bounties. Bounties are frustrating to sell. You buy your bounty and you're like, okay, well, I gotta figure out how to Where the fuck hell I'm are gonna they? find this person. Yeah. Where the hell are they? Yeah. There are they, and I, I there are like so many cool things about this game. And as I was talking with people about it, I can see the excitement that they were because because I, I was I was talking about it in the please stop talking discord server uh with like i i think i talked about it with a few people who actually voted on the game for us to talk about it and they were like so excited for us to play it and they were really like going deep and talking like oh you can do this and if you're stuck just message me and you should probably check that out and do this and i was like they their excitement was like oh that's awesome like i it's infectious, but also when then I would do those things and I fucking also <laughs> it's so boring. It's just so boring. I I like that it's like a systems driven game and stuff like that and how open ended it is. But to me, to in order to achieve that, it's gotten in the way of a lot of the just like basic level gameplay of it. Because combat in this game is you just click on someone or you're trying to kite them like it's a fucking moba. If you've got like a ranged weapon, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, sandbox video games. I, I mean, personally, as, as somebody who plays a lot of video games like this, I, I would still recommend something like Rim World or yeah. Rim World. Uh, I, I, that's what I was gonna say. I, I was gonna say, mm. why does Rim World work for me, but this does not? Like, what is it about Rim World? Because Rim World has systems better built in. A, there is an end game, and then B, Rim World. I was I was talking about this on stream the other day about Kenshi. Is one thing Kenshi doesn't do very well that Rim World does well, even though they're different genres of video games. Um, they yeah, both yeah. do the same thing where you tell your own story. Is Rim World has systems in place that help you tell the story. I.e., an example that I love about Rim World is um, I had a game where I had two characters in my colony. They got into a fight. One character ripped off another character's fucking arm. And I didn't have to, I don't have to micromanage their inventory. I don't have to like worry about like feeding them as long as I have like shit set up to feed them. But one character ripped off another character's arm and started beating him with his own arm. They got better. They got help. The dude got a prosthetic arm. The dude who ripped off the arm eventually became my guy who made furniture. And then I had him make a bed for the guy whose arm he ripped off. When he made that bed, he made artwork depicting him ripping that guy's arm off. And then I made him sleep in that bed with artwork above the poster board of his arm getting ripped off by the guy who made the bed which is incredible the fact that it it's even possible and it's not there's like no micromanaging it just kind of it just well that's that's a big reason I why know. i never engaged with kenshi squad system is i just didn't want to deal with it's, more I, inventories dude, I, and everybody people. that's the thing right everybody was telling me nonstop, like oh well you're kind of getting locked out of a lot of the fun because you don't have like a crew and then when i got a crew you have to I, feed and bathe and clothe your crew I, yeah yeah, I, I, I immediately felt so overwhelmed 
because there's so much micromanaging and it's really not f- interesting or fun micromanaging. It's just a lot of tedium. Dude, it's just everything is so tedious about this game. It's just a tedious fucking game. It's 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 annoying because I can see the appeal. Like I can a hundred percent understand. But like also I don't I don't like Roofscape. <laughs> so like I just feel like this is a game that is just completely out of my wheelhouse and just is I, I'm glad it exists for the people who want this but at the same yeah. time i'm like man i could want anything less. i could i mean kenshi 2 is, is coming uh it's been in development for a while i feel like it, it has the potential to get rid of a lot of the tedium i don't know if it is going to get rid of a lot of the tedium at least if I, it's I don't going know to have any, the tedium it'll maybe like, make the tedium more fun and interesting i mean i don't even know if i would say that like what you're gonna put some candy and spice on that team put a fucking mini yeah put a fucking fishing mini game in there oh there know? we go sold <laughs> oh what put about a card, card game in there like we uh, go to yeah what about a card game we had the same fucking card fucking oh fuck no i mean i don't know like kenshi 2 has it, it could become something very special i just don't think that kenshi 1 is that game for me Mm. Oh, we've only talked about it for 20 minutes. I feel like we've talked about it for five hours. I did go to a cool place <laughs> I'm called so the exhausted. End of the World. I could try to go back there again. Honestly, the, 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 the most fucking annoying part about Kenshi to me is I played it for 15 hours and I genuinely have nothing to say about it. I see the appeal. I'm frustrated that I don't get it because I think I would like it, but I don't like playing it. I just, I just don't have anything to say about this game. Even b- before we got in, I like we were all like getting ready to record, and we all said like, "Well, I I I am not excited to talk about this game because I have nothing to say." All I like fuck big things. If I see a big thing walk into my fucking house, I'm actually going to rip you in half. I fucking hate them. And he, even then, like, I was talking at one point with some people, and they like they were watching me play, and they were actually people who liked the game. And then they were like, "Oh no, you got." you got crucified by the frog men or whatever and i and they were all excited about it and i was like well it's not that exciting i just got crucified there's nothing to it i'm just dead now it's not, <laughs> it's not a story i just died yeah i just think if there was something more to the base like if there was like a combat system that was interesting or like there was something something else there that i could sink my teeth into on like a base level then all of the systems would like click uh, if if the game had an option for a base level narrative that would guide you along these systems and paths or just a fucking tutorial dude i don't like yeah i feel like we keep moving past it but this game is like a barrier to entry is literally a brick wall it's a brick wall and it's, if you're not it's the kool-aid of, man you you're not getting fucking, in yeah no you have to actually push through dude it's, you know how long it, it real it took me to realize that when you clicked on like a house in the bottom left would yeah, come there's up a like a thing, thing to, to buy the house. I didn't know until we Brendan said it. Yeah, Billy had <laughs> to ask me, and I was like, oh, you can buy that house. I had to ask Brendan because I was losing my mind, and I was like, well, I don't want to build in the fucking wilderness because if I build in the wilderness, I'm just going to fucking get mugged. And then I I, I asked Brendan. Did you know like, that you could you? go to certain towns and buy maps that will like literally show you yeah. where cities and towns are? Yeah, I learned because somebody told me. That's the thing, though. It's like a... I feel like the it's a game that wants you to discover and like pushes for discovery, but dude, it's it's too obtuse f- to make the discovery interesting for me. Like everything's so fucking like you you. I every time I discover something, I never think like, whoa, cool. I think fuck you. You should have told me to, to begin with, man. I don't want to fuck it. You're wasting my time. <laughs> I feel like the game wastes my time. <laughs> this game is best played while watching Babylon Five at a secondary monitor. I. Uh, it's it's an amazing second monitor game. It's an idle RPG. It's just like those idle RPGs. It's fucking cookie clicker, but you uh, I don't know might die of hunger. Like <laughs> it's it's cookie clicker, but you have to eat fucking food cube. You must consume food cube. That, I I'd say that's my biggest like issue. I feel like with the game, honestly, is like. I've engaged with a lot of the systems, and once I get into some of the meat of some of it with a character that has, like, 50 in martial arts and 80 toughness, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to pick it up. And then I got eaten by a beak thing, and I was like, I gotta load, uh, like, an hour back, fuck. Or, like, I can't find NPCs that have an interesting story to tell um, without, a lot of, like, Googling, a lot of the NPCs, where do I find yeah. quests, mm. right? Yeah, I don't want to fucking I, do I feel that. like a lot of the a lot of the times I talk to an NPC, and they're like, 
fuck you i'll fucking kill you and i'm like okay dog it's like all right buddy all right buster all right buddy all right buster cool edgy awesome fuck off but also i love buying property this is like monopoly but you punch things (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) damn uh i'll also say i don't know i think uh in terms i i wish i had engaged in the weapon systems more i think they're probably easier than martial arts and if i hadn't decided to go you know strictly into martial arts it probably would have i probably would have had a better time yeah in my playthrough i became a samurai because i killed somebody that okay that's a lie i I didn't kill anything i just i just saw a fucking fight happen (laughs) stuff on them yeah yeah Yeah. i love when that happens you get all that free gear you sell it to a bar yeah i just stole a bunch of uh just stole a bunch of uh shinobi gear and then i was rich and a shinobi and i did the same thing billy but uh it was like in the town and they had fucking almost like almost killed the barman so i had to wait while he was in like a recovery coma for like three days until he were or like a day a day and a half or something until he woke up again and then i could sell him the stuff that i had i just bought a house damn love real estate <laughs> i don't really think we have anything more to say it's kind of hard to like talk unless anybody else oh, um did, stuff. Did, did you guys did, none of you guys engaged in the prosthesis system at all did you no, no i when i i was uh, way too poor when i would lose a limb i would be like well i can't play this anymore and i just left because limbs were expensive as fuck yeah the prosthesis system is is fucking wild uh there's so many different options it's it's interesting and like you have to it's so it's so wild that you have to invest so much into it um and like i also still have yet to buy like a backpack or anything like i've just been i got a backpack i got a backpack because at first i was like well i don't i the combat fucking is so boring to me and i like the exploration so i was like well i guess eraser head baby which was the my character eraser head baby i guess i'll make him uh, a trader and i i realized how boring trading is oh and- see i just bought a backpack for the first time and i like didn't know that it would give you a full separate big inventory space that's uh yeah and depending on which type uh some backpacks i, I think the leather backpacks are just a big inventory and the other types of backpacks are like le- they let you stack items oh. but have a smaller space but you can stack for like multiple uh, i don't know understandable also like getting a beast of burden is a thing um which i did not engage with because it is expensive and that thing is just going to get killed by whatever the fuck is out there mm. all right boring That's, myself did, as okay, I uh, did, it. did either of you guys explore any of the um the ruins did i any three of yep. you explore like ruins i really like that yep. where like ruins nope. sometimes have like a bunch of weird fucking loot that you can find yeah, no that that's the thing right the the lore is interesting like it is actually there's a lot of interesting stuff in the lore it's just that i did not en- you, you to engage with the lore in any capacity you have to spend an insane amount of time yeah i there's we i i feel like we literally have nothing to say and it's been only 30 minutes <laughs> Ooh, it's okay. rough. it definitely yeah, no. is a video game let's it's all give our final thoughts on kenshi starting with you tan uh annoyed yeah. <laughs> annoyed yeah billy i mean i i I don't think I've ever played a game where I just feel complete nothing about it. If and I, 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 okay, well, maybe annoyed because I spent way too long and the game does not respect your time at all, which is so ass. I hate that it doesn't like, come on, seven hours at least give me a spec of fucking anything interesting. Yeah, fifteen hours, and I don't know if I enjoyed any of it. I I like I I made the I made the I made the perilous boys. Then I deleted that start because I was in the middle of nowhere and I kept dying within five minutes. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, there's, um, it's I'm something. just saying words now. It, it's, it's something, some. dude. I, I, it's something it's for, it's for RuneScape Hon- kids, dude. Honestly, that's the thing is that that will be my last thought is that there will be people listening to this that will hear us complaining about this game and all of the points we complain about i'm sure that they will be like oh that sounds exactly for me which is yeah, great yeah. you are a freak you will love this game this is a game for freaks and sickos 
And I am only half freak. I am only half sicko. I don't know about a game for freaks and sickos. Absolutely. This is the most boring ass. Fu- no, this is you, for your fucking grandma. This is no. not for your this, grandma. This, this, this is a game for, this is a game sickos, for Billy. No, this is a game for uh, people who are just fucking. They have a fucking peppermint in their mouth and they're just suckling on it with no teeth, dude. This is so no, boring. This is for the motherfucker who would crank back five bang energy drinks and like be watching eight shows no. at once while playing this game for 28 yeah, hours fucking straight. Yeah. No way, dude. Uh, yeah. No, that that's what. No, this is a game for people who want to think they're like I 100% this. disagree with you no. and I guarantee this is a game if you're for the people type of motherfucker to have a chain like wallet this. you love Kenji you comment right uh, now that's let me I, know. I, I, I would not call this a game for freaks it's definitely not a game for freaks it 100% is a game for sickos it's, it's, it's a, a game for yeah. sickos not for freaks 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 are interesting sickos scare me and I think anybody who likes this game <laughs> they don't scare me I feel pity <laughs> Freaks are too busy playing that cart racer, the pornographic one with the <laughs> wild. <laughs> <dog>. <laughs> Forgot about the biggest news story of the week. Yeah, (laughs) we forgot to talk about the big news story, guys. Wild Woody from Sega CD is in a fucking porn card game on on Steam. Zone Tan's in it, I guess. Yeah, he has a big fucking cock. I he's a pencil, and he's gonna dick your ass. I thought you were gonna say dick your dog down, and I was like, what? No, no. Why, why would I, I say this. that? The alliteration, I don't know. I mean, I kind of do like the alliteration. I'm an alliteration. <laughs> All right, with that. I'm illiterate as hell. Um, I'm illiterate. I, I, I'm illiterate. You're going to need a pencil to write that down. Uh, we're um, illiterate. <laughs> oh, no, oh, wow, not Woody. that one. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the fucking right, camera off. With that, we're with our, <laughs> we in this show. Uh, again, if you guys want to choose the next game, uh, make sure it's not Kenji. Yeah, make sure it's um, good. <laughs> make sure it's Kenji again. Pick pick Mountain Blade Warband. No. Honestly, I'm way more down for Mountain Blade. I'm way more down for Mountain Blade. I Mountain Blade powers. actually has a fucking... It actually like pushes you to use its mechanics, so I'd be more down for fucking Mountain Blade than Kenji. I bounced off that game, too. Oh, you yeah. didn't have enough fucking cavalry. That's what's up. I didn't have enough fucking fun. Uh, did you like? Did you guys pick a game that's actually engaging? Like I don't know, Devil May Cry. I think we. I have hey, more the to last say few about times that. they were good. Okay, this that's is, true. That's true. The yeah, monkey's you, you paw guys- curls. They vote for Devil May Cry too. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you like Devil right. May Cry too? I love Devil May Cry too. Oh, I hate it. I, I like one. Yeah, Brendan's a, two, Brendan's a fucking I sicko. Three. I didn't play three, four, or five. I stopped at two. What? Oh, yeah, I was man. like, I know I got halfway through three and then I died and I was like, fuck this. And I was like, two's great. You get the guns in that one. Fucking <laughs> hell. Did you only play one and two? Yep. And half of three. You're, you're talking like a sicko. I hate and for, fighters. You're talking like a fucking sicko. I dude. am a sicko. Honestly, honestly, uh, what are we, art or cool? You would love, uh, you would love this art? little game called Kenshi, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Kenshi is Ken shit, dude. I don't fucking want to play it anymore. All right, I'm thanks, installed. guys, for uh, listening to all those that wow. got to the end of this. Uh, thanks yeah, for, for all up. the. And for thank you sickos. for anybody that showed re- any any Kenshi fans that just showed restraint and didn't just comment without re- <laughs> listening to the rest of the episode. <laughs> <laughs>Thanks so much for listening. This episode would not have been possible without the help from our patrons, such as Alan Diver, Art of Ogden, Bure, Bland But Funny, Boo Boo Lou, Brain Soup, Cassandra Crash, Chris Chapman, Christian Van Angen, Dog Named Bear, DX Studios, Echo Stalker, Eric Scott Gillies, Ethereal, Geef, Generic Phoenix, Guy Beam, Handsome Destiny, Kawaii Boy Toy, Lambda Man, Leo the Geotech, Mediocre Client, Mr. Shirt, Random Diamonds, Rocco the Raccoon, Smeet Mono, Spherical May, The Frost Ace, Ulbert, Winnie Rab, Will9455, and Woodstock. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.